Hey, it's time once again for high school football here on WKXL AM and FM. Out there in the park, Concord High School at Winnicott, out there on the coast, and here are all the play-by-play -play and the color is our own Bruce Lavoy and Harvey Smith and on-site engineer Jeremy Henry. A very pleasant good afternoon, everybody, from the seacoast of New Hampshire as we follow the crimson tide of Cork to this picturesque community here in Hampton for our high school football game of the week. The 3-3 Tide have lost their last two games in emotional, hard-fought, heartbreaking close encounters to powerhouses Spalding and Portsmouth and now must regroup today versus yet another seacoast opponent, Dick Gagne's always pesky Winnicott Warriors. Concord's playoff chances are still very much alive here in 1991, and the storyline today is to find out how much emotion these gritty Crimson kids have left against a Winnicott team with a deceiving 1-5 record on its home field. Hello, everybody. Along with Bruce Lavoy, I'm Harvey Smith, and we are in an absolutely stunning setting for our broadcast today. High School Football brought to you by the Allied Insurance Agency at 500 South Street on the Bowtown Line. At the Allied Insurance Agency, your protection is their profession. S&W uh, Sports Shops, 238 South Main Street in Concord, comes to bikes, cross-country, and alpine skiing, entire family to the leader, S&W Sports. By the Horizon Bank at 197 Loudon Road in Concord, your locally owned and managed community bank. By Denroy Shoes, 76 North Main Street in Concord, featuring athletic footwear for the entire family. By Bernie Sports of Concord, if you're outfitting a team for the fall or winter seasons, call Jim Bernie at 224-2131. He'll come to your home or your office. And by the Capital City Law Firm of Rapp, Young, Pignatelli, and Oyer, on behalf of their clients and the entire community. The Crimson Tide of Concord High at 3-3 three and three down here at Winnicott 5, the 12th meeting in the series in history between Concord and Winnicott. The Crimson Tide lead the series 7-4, to four, the first game ever between these schools back in 1968, 23 years to noon, Winnicott would win that first game 7-6. to six. This game is extremely important for the Crimson Tide, who had their playoff hopes dashed over the last two weekends with tough late fourth quarter losses to both Spalding and uh, to uh, Portsmouth. And uh, Concord played well in the second half of the Portsmouth game, especially on homecoming last Saturday afternoon. And they still have destiny in their own hands. Uh, five and three would get them in. Not only would it get them in, but it would get them into an outstanding bracket and away from Pinkerton. And uh, Jack Addy and the kids have that very much on their mind. We told you that we were in a stunning setting here this afternoon. Winnicott High School here along the coast. We're just a mile or so away from the beach. The high school has the, the athletic facilities in behind it, and the football field is cut out into, into a, down in a bowl like there. It's just a hill that surrounds the football field, and it's all manicured lawn, and the students and adults in both communities can sit on the lawn if they like and take in the festivities, and it's the trees, uh, the foliage, absolutely beautiful. The, the skies over here are completely blue, and the Bruce Lavoie, this really is one of the most stunning settings we've been in in a long time. You're absolutely right, Harvey, with the foliage that you can see around the area, and you're right, there are a lot of folks who have brought blankets sitting out on the lawn on the hillsides overlooking this field. It really is a uh, really nice atmosphere here this afternoon, crisp, clear air, a little bit of a threat of rain as the weather forecast holds true from earlier this morning, but no sign of that right now as there is not a cloud in the sky. And a little bit of a breeze blowing from right to left across the football field, but should not be a factor here this afternoon at all. The coast was very much alive in high school football last night. If you haven't heard, uh, Spalding's undefeated season came to a screeching halt over here. Spalding defeated Dover's Green Wave 35 to nothing. And another stunning score, Exeter defeated Portsmouth down here at Portsmouth last night, 28 to 21. But do bear in mind that Dover was without six of its uh, regular starting players and Portsmouth was without seven of its regular starting players and were involved in a brawl between the school, two schools last Friday night down in Dover. And the Sportsmanship Committee viewed the films and uh, mandated that 13 athletes would sit out of the next games. And so consequently, both Dover and Portsmouth lost those games, and I really do believe the loss of those kids had a direct bearing on the outcome of those games, Bruce. I would have to say so. I was not surprised that Spalding beat Dover last night, but I was surprised at the 35 to nothing count. Uh, Spalding is either a lot better than I thought they were. I thought they were a good team, but I didn't know they were 
good enough to beat a team that I thought was one of the premier te- teams in the state in the Dover Green Wave. Another score that kind of raised my eyebrows this morning was West beating Trinity down at uh, uh, Gill Stadium last night, 22-13, to 13, although you say you don't think that's an upset. West High has been on a roll lately. They lost their first four games, and all by close margins. I mean, heartbreaking losses down there for Paul Levine. Nights and uh, the last two weeks, they've been able to put it together, and uh, West has come together a little bit and could sneak into the playoffs if they could get to four and four. Jack Addy and I have philosophical differences now. It's official, Bruce. So he <laughs> says four and four won't get a team in. It's got to be five and three. I think four and four will still get a team in. Hmm. Okay. Well, West. Uh, after last night's action is uh, three and four on the year, uh, Concord, as we say, coming into this game is three and three important game. Uh, a couple of other scores from last night: Salem defeated Bishop Girton thirty to fourteen, and the Blue Devils moving up to four and three on the year and keeping the uh, Bishop Girton Cardinals winless on the year. That kind of an interesting output as well. With Salem, uh, one of those teams that nobody uh, gives a thought to, and yet they are, they are right in uh, in about eighth place right now at four and three and uh, very much in the tournament picture as we speak here this afternoon. And one game from Class I, no surprise, as the high-powered Laconia High Sachems demolished the Cardinals of Stevens 53-6 to last night under the lights in Laconia. Winniconnet High School has a head coach who is familiar to a lot of Concord area sports fans. Uh, he was one of the better three-sport athletes to play in high school at a St. John's High School back in the early 60s is over here now as the head coach of Winnicott High School. We just talked to Dick Gagne a few moments ago. Concord native who migrated here to the Seacoast through Vermont. How you doing, Dick? Good, how are you? I appreciate you coming over. It's always a joy seeing you. Big weekend here down on the coast. Uh, Dover last night lost its unbeaten streak over at uh, Spalding, and then Portsmouth gets upset by Exeter. I'm just wondering now, what Winnicott has in store for Concord here today? Oh, we're, gonna, we're not going to leave anything in the bag, believe me, as we say in a golf game, but uh, we're going to come out. Uh, we got nothing to lose. Uh, we got an opportunity to maybe upset a, a real uh, good Concord team, and uh, our kids are excited about having the chance of doing that. Speaking of your kids, Dick, I looked at your roster, and you have a lot of underclassmen, and uh, that's a nice way to turn it around because they're playing well. Yeah, I think you're right, Harvey. We only have six seniors and uh, only two start on offense and uh, three start defensively. So we're basically uh, an underclass-laden uh, team, and uh, what we wanted to do going in was to improve each game and we thought we did a pretty good job up until the Dover game. Uh, Dover played very well, kind of took us out of our ball game. And, uh, so, but I think we're still improving. We're young, and, and hopefully uh, next year we can turn it around. I look back at your schedule this year, and I, I just know that a lot of people around the state, they looked at the, the Nashua game, and uh, you almost beat them that night. And Nashua could end up 7-1 and one now. Uh, they've been through the tough part of their schedule. That might have changed your whole season around. It could have. Uh, we were really looking for a big upset. The kids were pretty excited to play down there. You know, you take a, a, a you know a miss a extra point in the uh, end zone, and uh, you know who knows. Uh, you beat a team like that, and, and obviously it, it couldn't really turn the season around. You're right. You played Crockett High tough over the last two years. The scores are deceiving, and I'm sure you've looked at the films. And uh, really, uh, Jack Gaddy, known for his long drives, really didn't execute any long drives against Winnicott. They were all the big plays. So you contained them for a long periods of time, and only big plays got away from you. Yeah, last year we kind of broke down on our coverage, and uh, the two big plays that really hurt us was the pass plays. And, uh, and we're looking for the same thing. We're looking for the same effort from our uh, linemen. Uh, and, again, what we're trying to do is break down where they lull you to sleep uh, by running the ball, running the ball, and all of a sudden, you know, they take that one shot to pass. And all it takes is one person to break down because you have to put so many people on the line, and they score. So uh, we got to, you know, we've really worked hard on this to, for discipline-wise. The longest drive in either of the last two years against uh, Concord and when it kind of came from your kids, 6.30 last year, and you punched it in for a touchdown. Do you try to outscore Concord, or do you try to keep the ball away from them, Dick? The biggest thing I think have, and I think probably all coaches will say the same thing, I think the big uh, the big difference that you can do is, is the defense that you play is your offense. By uh, having your offense on the field, that keeps uh, you know their, their offense off. So if you have a good offense, then uh, it turns around to be a good defense because you're keeping Concord off the field, and and uh, Concord can't do that monotonous uh, three plays and three plays and three plays. So that's what we're trying to do. Concord's left its heart right out on the field the last two games. They had a barn burner with Portsmouth. They got away in the last few minutes. They had a great game with Spalding in the second half. Uh, you know, how many weekends in a row can the kids keep coming back? You know, as a coach, you probably say the same thing. I'm sure Coach Gaddy and the rest of his crew are probably saying the same thing. But one thing about football, I think, is no, like no other sport. Uh, you get ready for uh, a game, and it takes you the whole week to get ready for it. So the mental aspect of it, as well as the physical aspect of it, plays a big part. 
And I think the kids are durable. Uh, they know that uh, they've got a whole week to prepare for another team, so therefore they're going to come out and give another great effort. Dick, I've always wanted to ask you, uh, we are good friends, uh, the Pam Smart thing, uh, how disruptive was it to win a kind of on a day-to-day -day operational basis? Uh, the thing on and on and on, and even the recent movie uh, in the past three weeks, uh, did it, was it disruptive over here? Not too much, Harv. I think was, the only kids that really got disrupted by it were the people that were just uh, physically uh, in with it. And as far as the football team was concerned, there was only one individual that really had anything to do with it at all that knew the kids a little bit better than, say, someone else. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, we've got uh, 900 students, and you're talking maybe uh, 30 kids that were, you know, closely involved with it. So day to day, I think the teachers were affected it more than the student body. I think when it kind of took a little bit of some neg negative publicity because she really wasn't a teacher. She was just an aide over here. She wasn't a teacher, and yet you see the national publications, and they kept saying, when it kind of teacher, and that wasn't the case. No, that's not a case. She's, she worked in another building uh, totally away from when it kind of high school was just across the street. And uh, that's the thing that I think really disturbs the teachers as well as myself, that she had nothing to do with the faculty, uh, nothing to do with the students. And it was just a situation that came up that obviously we hope never happens again. Appreciate your frankness on that, Dick. And a uh, final question, uh, can we Concord fans expect a fumble rooski out of you guys today? <laughs> well, you never can tell, Harv, because I'll tell you, we're going to, like I say, we're not going to leave anything in the bag, so you can see about anything. I know Jack is very concerned about your offense today, Dick. I, he better, because I'll tell you, we're going to lay everything on the line, big Jack. Good luck to you. Good to see you. Thanks, Harv, very much. All right, Dick Gagne and the Jack Gaddy, the head man, will get his chance to uh, talk about this weekend over here on the seacoast it's a big weekend of football we'll be back with more of our pregame right after this stay with us with the basketball season coming it's time for teams to be ordering uniforms and supplies the best way to do that is by calling jim bernie at bernie sports in concord at bernie sports you'll select from the latest in uniforms sports equipment and they specialize in team jackets with a great choice of sizes colors and styles Best of all, you won't have to travel all over the state because Jim Bernie will come to your home or office. If you're outfitting a basketball team this winter, call Bernie Sports now at 224-2131, 224-2131. For comfort and style, Champion Athletic Apparel is the rage this fall and winter. Joe King Shoe Shop at 18 Pleasant Street, Concord, offers a large selection of sweatshirts, sweatpants, shorts, and T-shirts, each in the wide variety of colors, style, and sizes you've been waiting for. So whatever your sport, look to Joe King Shoe Shop for all your athletic footwear, apparel, and accessories. Joe King's for personal professional service. Open Thursday and Friday evenings. Coach, your 140th game at the high school level here in the state of New Hampshire. Congratulations. That's a, quite a milestone. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I knew you didn't. I thought I'd surprise you today. It's a lot of games. <laughs> that is, and uh, most of them in the win column, too. You have to be fair about this. And uh, I know that that's not on your mind. When it kind of on your mind, and this, for a lot of reasons, is a big game for Concord today. So it is. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we're looking at the last two weeks where we played real good football at times and, and sometimes downs, which, you know, you take away two plays in, in uh, each of those two games, and we could be 5-1 at this point. So, But I think we're building on the second half of the Spalding game, which I thought was an outstanding second half on our, on our part. The kids played extremely hard, came back from a 20 nothing deficit, and uh, you know, we came close to winning that ballgame with Spalding. And uh, you know we're building off that second half. It's the most intensity I've seen our group in the last two years. And uh, like I said, if we carry that intensity on with the next two games, we're going to be looking good for making the playoffs. Not only intensity, Jack, but I saw some real hard-nosed, tough football out of those kids. And when that happens, execution is the result. And uh, we executed very well on defense and on the offensive side against a good Spalling team. And uh, granted, Spalling might have come out, you know, a little, little low, being up 20 to zero. But I, I think we woke them up with a long drive, and uh, they started playing hard. And but we continued to play hard. And uh, like I said, it was a good second half. You got to build on this, and you know, when it comes, going to give us a struggle. But I think if we could play with the same. Uh, toughness and execute on both sides of the ball, you know, against Winnicott. I think we'll come on, on one side. I asked Dick Gagne, uh, the Winnicott coach, about Concord kids and having left their hearts right out on the field the last two weekends in a row and how many times can high school kids keep coming back. And he said something to, to the extent that football kind of lends itself to coming back because you have a pair. You do. You know, you, 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 uh, you know, it hurts on a weekend, but you come back Monday, you look at films, and uh, all of a sudden you start thinking positive and start working a little harder and uh, you know it, it falls back into place. Our, our kids are confident and uh, we're confident as a coaching staff and again we had a good week of practice and a hard week of practice. 
uh, I think it was one of the most intense weeks that we've had in the last couple. It kind of matched the second half of the Spalding game. When it cut it high uh, second to last weekend in the regular season, uh, what can you tell us about them? Well, obviously they don't have a lot of wins on their side, but they've played a lot of people tough, and we tried to explain that to the kids. Uh, let's see, early in the season, they, they played a tough national team, 14-12, and 12, and uh, they had a big win against Central. And we saw them against Dover, where they moved the ball and defended Dover, you know, at, at times. But uh, you know, they saw try to go wide outside with their option game, and uh, they passed the ball, you know, a fairly, fairly good amount, which, you know, we always have a problem with. So we have to play good balance defense, and our key for us is our defensive ends, you know, getting onto the quarterback before he can make a decision on his option. That's our key on defense. Do we expect to see some physical football out of the defensive line today? I hope so. You know, we're still missing Timmy Thompson, who, yeah. who's been outstanding all year long. And uh, but Eric Woods came in last week and uh, did a pretty good job, you know, going both ways. And Tyler Savage, who's a junior, big young man, who's um, uh, had a nice week of practice. And uh, we're not going to be uh, worried about putting him in because I think he'll do a good job for us. So you know, if we have to rest Woodsy, we'll uh, we'll put in Tyler, who's come along. But uh, you know, it'd be nice to have Timmy back, and I think he will be back for next week. Okay, well, let's hope so, indeed. We are ready to go here at Winnicott High School in Hampton on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Welcome to High School Football, the voice of Concord High. Here is Harvey Smith. Harvey. All right, Bruce Lavoy, and we are underway with a Garrett Stump kick all the way down to the 10-yard line, taken there by uh, Kevin Cotel. He moves up to the 20, ahead to the 30, and he gets stacked up at about the... 30-yard line as Cockett High specialty kids get down there, and the Winnicott Warriors will go on offense first here. They start Joel Weiss at center, Dan Brigandi and Dan Friedem at the guards, Austin Weber and Brian Arakalian at the tackles, Tom O'Brien and Jeremy Gilbert, two experienced ends. Dave Pickett is the quarterback. He's a junior. Frank Daly, the fullback in the eye, and Matt Carlin, the dot on the eye, and Kevin Law, the flanker, as they bring that High formation up to the 30-yard line. First play from scrimmage this afternoon, the Warriors. And it's a play action and a run. And the fullback takes the ball right up to the 35-yard line before Cargett High can even get him. Matt Carlin just came right up to the 25 before anybody could touch him, Bruce. And I'll tell you, when he was touched, though, he was nailed right there at the midsection and bent over like a jackknife folding up. Pick up a five yards, four and a half on the play. It brings up a second down and five. They are at their own 35-yard line. The Winnicott Warriors, what a beautiful day for football, Harry. All right, the Warriors oh. break their center, Joel Weiss. He's sophomore, folks, but he looks like a college kid. 6'3", 260 pounds, I formation. Carlin gets the call again, heading off the right tackle this side, and this time Carcat High's defense is waiting for him for no gain. It'll bring up a third and five. Defensively now, Carcat High has a few changes. Eric Woods is down there at the inside tackle for Tim Thompson, who is out with that knee injury. Andy Funk inside tackle. Dave Lossage and Blake Savoy on the ends. Actually, Andy Milliken is on the end, and Blake Savoy is at an inside linebacker position with Tom Marshall, Mike Mayo, and John Forrestal, the corners. McGonagall, Stafford, and Ekstrom back deep. High formation, third down for the Warriors. Five yards from their 35-yard line. It is a fake to the fullback, and the quarterback keeps coming around the right end. He's got some running room across the 40, the 45, the 50, and down to the Concord 45. Goes Dave Pickett before he's run out of bounds by the linebacker, Blake Savoy. And Dave Pickett, which beautifully, Bruce, came along the line of scrimmage faked to his fullback, and then kept it around the end for a big gainer. Pickett made a little bit of a halfway pump uh, as he came out of the backfield, and that kind of froze the Concord secondary and held him right there, and a nice pickup for the youngster all the way down to the Concord 44-yard line, so that's a pickup of, uh, uh, well, let's see, four, uh, 20 yards on the play down to the 44-yard line. A 20-yard pickup for Pickett. Yep. Pickett pickup, one of the first. In motion, <laughs> goes over from his left to his right. Pickett, play action. He's back to pass. He puts it in the air. He's got a man open, and it is incomplete down at the Corkett High 25-yard line. As uh, Kevin Cotel, who was in motion, headed downfield, and he was pretty well open, and the ball was a little underthrown, but I thought catchable. It did appear that way, but uh, he did not catch it. He had it in his hands. It was hit just about the same time the ball got there, to be fair, Harvey. So brings up a second down and 10, and Winnicott is at the Concord 44-yard line, closer to the 45, actually. They are just just over the 45-yard line. Winnicott in royal blue shirts with red numerals. Concord High in their all-white travel uniforms this afternoon. I formation. Flanker goes in motion. That's Law going to his left. Play action, and then the eye back gets it going through the line. And Picard has some room as he crosses the 40, the 35. He's at the 15, and he's hauled down from behind. 
as the Crimson Tides, Matt Ekstrom and Blake Savoy got Carlin from behind to save the touchdown, but I'll tell you, Carlin broke through out of the eye and went off to the 15-yard line. Yeah, he is down to the 15, as Harvey mentioned, and that's a pickup of 29 yards on that play. So a couple of big plays have set the Warriors up in fine field condition, position, that is. You mentioned the uh, white uniforms, Harvey. They put the Crimson uniforms to bed. They cannot play another home game this year. There you go, high formation. The motion is coming to the right side this time. It is a play action. Pickett puts the ball in the air, and it is a completion out here to about the 12-yard line. The ball was thrown 25 yards sideways, but a nice reception out there by uh, Kevin Cotell, the receiver. Yeah, really long throw to uh, pick up. Well, a few yards on the play, Harvey brings up a second down and four, and they are down inside the 10-yard line at the nine. Five-yard five gain, says the public announcer over here. Well... Okay, we'll look at the uh, <laughs> down market, though. I tend to agree with you. It's a, it's a longer... Five and a half. Five and a we'll half. cut it down the middle. All right, eye formation. The eye back gets it. Ricard comes right up to the 10-yard line, dives ahead to the eight. And the winner kind of Warriors are on the march early here, and offensively, they look precise down That's here on this field. Idea. They sure do. They actually mark it just about the five-yard mm -hmm. line, Harvey. This is going to bring up a measurement for first and goal as Winnicott has taken the opening drive, opening ball, uh, kickoff at their own 30-yard line, and it's now marched down all the way to the Concord 5, and it looks like they're going to be very close to the first down. And if I had to put money on it, I'd say they've got it. Well, you've been on a roll lately, and you are right again this time. First and the goal to go from yeah. the 5-yard line for the Warriors. Third first down of this drive. So can the Warriors punch it in here and get the early score? It's been a big weekend of football on the coast here last night with the uh, dover Spalding thing and Portsmouth. And now the Warriors are looking for an upset. High formation. Back to pass is Pickett. He has a man in the end zone, and it's a touchdown. Beautifully thrown ball from Pickett to Kevin Cotell, who came out of the backfield, and he was all alone in the right end zone, and the Warriors break on top. 6-0 on their first drive with the football over here on the coast this afternoon. Pretty drive put together by the Warriors. Three first downs along the way, and uh, let's see, eight plays, 70 yards. All right, Mike Lilly, back up quarterback on the hole. It's a box thing. Lilly gets up, puts the ball in, and it's knocked down by Blake Savoy down there, and Winnicott is going to have to settle for six. And if you're just joining us, guess what? The tide has fallen behind over here on the coast to Winnicott. It's 6-0 in favor of the Warriors. We'll be right back. The Allied Insurance Agency, their motto, your protection is our profession, is practiced daily. Professional staff is truly at your service when it comes to protecting you, your family, and your business with total insurance coverage at very attractive rates. The Allied Insurance Agency is locally owned and operated. They know the greater Concord area. They live here, and their staff utilizes the services of excellent New Hampshire insurance companies. Companies such as the Concord Group, Peerless, and the New Hampshire Insurance Company. At the Allied Insurance Agency, they believe in supporting the area's youth and they've established a long of high school sports sponsorship. And once again, winning tradition of Allied Insurance and local high school football continues as Allied Insurance and WKXL bring you these live broadcasts of the Concord High Crimson Tide and the Bishop Brady Green Giant football games. From Dave Gasway Sr. and Dave Gasway Jr. and the entire staff of Allied Insurance Agency, good luck and good sportsmanship. Here's the punt at the 15 and comes all the way out to the Concord High 35 and the Crimson Tide will get the ball for the first time this afternoon over here on the coast trailing 6-0 on the 5-yard picket pass to Kevin Cotell. The try for the extra point was botched low snap from center and the, court, the holder couldn't get up and throw it very well. Concord out to the 35 first and 10. Alright, key formation for the Tide to open up this afternoon and the second man threw gets the call and he is dumped and I want to tell you they threw him right up over the pile and he went right up over upside down Don Ross boy that was really a tough, a sure tough tackle right there picked up a two uh, and uh, yeah he went straight up and straight down Whoa. but did a somersault in midair on the way 70 yards eight plays two minutes and 42 seconds to win a cut and scoring drive Harvey. yeah make that change staff but Don Ross is out with an injury this afternoon all right second and eight McGonagall, second man through, fakes, tries to go around the right side. He turns the corner. He's got some running room across the 40, the 45, out to the 50, and 
run out of bounds somewhere near midfield. And so Ryan McGonigal, the quarterback, comes up with a big play. Faked it to uh, Stafford going into the middle of the line. Kept it, went around the corner. Had some traffic there, but then he flew around that corner, Bruce, and outran the traffic. Absolutely, he did. He fixed the ball, uh, carried the ball for 11 out to the 48-yard line. And it's a first and 10 for Concord at their own 48. All right, key formation for the Tide. They have one first down in the bank now in this initial drive. Second man through gets the call. That is uh, Shane Stafford again, and uh, he gets about three yards off the right side. One thing we've seen from Stafford this year is uh, probably the most speed that Concord has on that field comes out of his legs. So if he is managing to, if he's able to get open, he is really able to motor down that field in fine shape. They give him about two yards on the play, just over the 50-yard line to, uh, if you want to stretch it, it's uh, to the 49 of Winnicott. They're in a hostile territory anyway. All right, second and eight. Pat Wooded in the backfield now. It is a pitch to mail the fullback. Tries the right side, turns the corner, crosses the 45, and is out of bounds somewhere near the 42-yard line of Winnicott. Straight pitch from Mayo coming out of his fullback position around that right side, and he gets some good yardage, but not quite enough for the first down. It's going to bring up third and short here. Yeah, I'd have to tell you that's a rather unkind spot of the ball, I think, Harvey. He went out of bounds on the far sideline, but it looked like he picked up more than the six yards there. Third and two for the Tide at any rate at the Winnicott at 44-yard line, and we have a whistle now. And they have a little bit of an equipment problem. Referees fixes for the guy right there in the backfield of Winnicott. And here we go. Third and two for the Tide. They give the ball to Milliken. He lumbers across and then dives ahead, and it's going to be a close spot. It's uh, certainly in four-down territory for Jack Gaddy, who likes to go for it in this situation. Uh, no question. Uh, I'm not sure that they got the first down, but it is going to be very, very short. And yeah. it's fourth and about a yard. Yep, they're going to mark it, mark it shy, uh, fourth and one. And they picked up about one on the play down to the 43-yard line. And Milliken stayed straight up. He never did go down. He kind of spun as he uh, looked like a corkscrew in the middle of the line there and picked up one yard on the play. All right, six-man warrior defensive front here. No no nose guard. First man through gets the call. It's Ekstrom, and he lumbers ahead on the right side, and it looks like he's got enough for the first down. It didn't come easy, folks, as Cock and I definitely trying to keep this drive alive with a fourth down play. They get off Matty Ekstrom on the carry. I'll tell you, but that is another unkind spot of the football, Harvey. They moved it back about uh, a foot and a half to two feet. That's the 41. So the Crimson Tide have their second first down of this initial drive. They trail 6-0 here over at Winnicott High School. T formation from the Warriors' 41-yard line. McGonagall calls signal. Double fake. He keeps the ball. He goes around and he heads down to about the 35-yard line. A big gain for Ryan McGonagall. Now, Ryan had 49 carries coming into this game. He's got his 50 and 51st here and both for huge gains. Uh, and he's the second leading ground gainer on this team this year. That's an amazing stat for a quarterback. But uh, Ryan's a big kid. He can handle it. And the thing that surprises me is they're on the short side of the field going to McGonagall's right. But he does so well going to the right pickup of uh, six yards on that play, second and four from the Winnicott at 34. So here come the Warriors uh, with that six-man defense. McGonagall's going back to pass. He's at the 40, puts it in the air. He's got a win open, and Pat Woodard can't hang on to the ball out at the 25-yard line. He was wide open, and he came across from his left to his right, and the ball was right there. Maybe the sun in his eyes, though, because he was looking back into a low, late fall sun here. Absolutely the the case right there is Woodard... uh, uh, had, just had the ball go off his fingertips, and he was all alone. The Winnicott defender t- seemed to stop about five yards away to see yep. where he caught it, where he was going to go after he caught it. All right, third and second for the Tide. Mayo gets the call, middle of the line, pullback trap. It's going to be close, and it may be bringing up another huge fourth down play in this initial drive for the Crimson Tide. They trail 6 nothing. if you're just joining us. I'm Harvey Smith, along with Bruce LaVoy. Glad to have you with us this afternoon. Just a smidgen over five and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. Fourth and a yard. We are coming to you uh, over 1450 AM, and this afternoon we are coming to you over our FM uh, call letters this afternoon. And so we say a special hello to all our fringe area communities who are listening to high school football this afternoon. Fourth and two from the Winnicott at 32-yard line. Offside goes the Warriors. No flag down. They get back. Milligan gets the call, and he gets across that uh, 30-yard line. The first down. I don't see any flags down. Two Warriors stunned across, got back. Concord High kind of was a little bit edgy, but they allow the play, and it is a first down, and 
again, Andy Milliken in a fourth down situation gives the tie to first down. Now, this is just what Winnicott didn't want to happen, was for Conker to uh, take control of the football and keep control of it for long stretches of time. But this is their second fourth down play in this drive, and they've had the ball now for quite some time. First and 30 for the tie. McGonagall keeps left this time. He crosses the 25, dives ahead to about the 22-yard line, and Ryan faked to Andy Milligan going into the line and came across around the left side this time, which is the first time he's tried that side. And I'll tell you, Concord High, in this drive with three first downs, have really used the running ability of its junior quarterback, Ryan McGonagall. And they have kept the ball for almost five minutes. A long, sustained drive currently in operation for the Crimson Tide as they bring their T formation to the 22-yard line of Winnicott, trailing six to nothing. Second down and three for the Tide right here. McGonagall takes the snap. He gives the ball to uh, Matty Ekstrom. He dives ahead to about the 20-yard line. They've got to get to the 19 for a first down. Let's see where they spot the ball. This should be enough here. It is another first down for the Crim. They're fourth in their initial drive as they drive down and try to tie this contest up as they fell behind early here, six to nothing, on a beautifully thrown ball from the quarterback, Dave Pickett, to Kevin Cotell coming out of the backfield for a five-yard touchdown. It is first and uh, 10 from the 19 of Winnicott right now, T formation for the Tide. Second man through, Ekstrom gets the call. He's got some big yardage. He's down to the 15, down to the 13, and maybe down to the 12-yard line as Matty Ekstrom, 5'10", senior, bulls his way ahead. Pick up of six yards on the play, down to the 12, and uh, Concord is uh, really being able to move the football right here. All of it on the ground. The one pass that they tried was incomplete, just off the receiver's fingertips. But uh, at any rate, they are keeping the ball, keeping control of the ball, and moving it, which is three big things for Concord Second and third. Right. And just outside the 10-yard line, and the flags go down before the ball is snapped. First flag of the afternoon. We'll have to see who it goes against. And it is against the Crimson Tide. Somebody moved before the snap of the ball, and they backed them up. It'll give us a chance to tell you the starting lineup. John Forrestal is the center. Dave Vlossage and Tom Marshall, the guards on offense. Eric Woods and Og Young are the tackles. Gary Gott and Blake Savoy are the starting ends, and Rob's there quite a bit. Ryan McGonigal at Mike Mayo, Matt Ekstrom, Andy Milliken, the starting backs. But we have seen that Shane Stafford several times this afternoon already. Second and nine for the Tide now as they back them up. And uh, McGonagall box a long count this time. He gives it to Ekstrom again. He crosses the 20, the 15, down to the 10, and down to the five-yard line. As he was like a little mouse scattering around among the leaves and the trees, and they couldn't find him. And he gets just jigging and dancing around. And before they could come up with him, he got it down to the six. That's right. First and goal for the Crimson Tide from the Winnicott at six. Time out on the field by the Winnicott Warriors as Concord High is at the six. Dick Gagne heads into the huddle. We'll be right back to see if Concord can tie it up. Stay with us. You know, high school sports are a source of great interest and pride, not only for the schools involved, but the communities they represent. High school sports help bring a community together, providing a common focus to care about and to cheer for. Now, because of this important role in the lives of our communities, high school sports are about a lot more than winning and losing. They are about working together and growing together. And that's why high school sports are such a tradition in the Capital Region. And the Capital City Law Firm of Rath, Young, Pignatelli, and Oyer, on behalf of its clients and friends, is pleased to be a part of this tradition by helping to bring these broadcasts to our community. And even more pleased to be part of a community that cares so much for its young people. Crimson Tide have kept position of this ball, Harvey, for six minutes and nine seconds. They have a first and goal at the six. of Winnicott. This is the 15th play of this drive coming up. All right, Shane Stafford in that fullback for Mayo here as they bring that T formation to the six. They give it to Ekstrom. He bounces off right tackle. He ricochets like a pinball down inside the four, the three, and down to the two before he comes down. Matty Ekstrom running the ball tough here this afternoon for the Crimson Tide. That was an excellent way of putting it, too. He did look like a pinball as he was bounced from one player to another player to another player to another player before he finally went down. They're inside the three-yard line. We're going to call it the uh, second and goal from the three. Parker the trailing Tide. by six are at the two-and-a-half-yard line. They bring the tee right to that two-and-a-half. McGonagall, long count. Gives it to Ekstrom. He dives across to about the one, and the Warriors come up with a huge defensive play 
to prevent the touchdown, and it brings up a third in goal for the Crimson from the one-yard line. Just uh, two minutes and 20 seconds left here in the first quarter, and uh, this is Cockert's first possession of the ball game. Winnicott it marched down the field, 70 yards in eight plays to score on their first possession, missed the, uh, missed the point after, but this is a third and goal, and boy, that, that ball can't be outside the goal line by more than a foot. All right, here come the tie to the one-yard line. They trail by six. McGonagall looks up at the scoreboard, the flag, the school. He sees those six points, and he wants it right here to give us to Ekstrom. He's off. He's in. Touchdown, Cockert High. They tie it up. And Matty Ekstrom has been so instrumental in this drive, coming down here with four first downs, gets the call for the touchdown, and the senior delivers here this afternoon, and it is 6-6 with Garrett Stum on the kick for the tie. Well, this is going to be uh, one of those uh, drives that is going to put a smile on the face of Coach Jack Gaddy, where the tide kept it for a long period of time. All right, Garrett Stum, who was 13 of 16 in extra points here in 1991. Mayo to hold, it's down. Stum has his foot in the air, he gets... It's wide to the left side. He got a good toe into it, but it was too strong to the left. And the tide will have to be content with the 6-6 tie, but it's a brand new ball game now with 152 to play. 6-6 is your score from the coast. We'll be right back. <laughs> Whether you're running, aerobics, basketball, rollerblades, or football, Joe King Shoe Shop has a large selection of styles and sizes to fit your every need. Top manufacturers like Reebok, Adidas, Saucony, and New Balance ensure the quality you expect and deserve. 18 Pleasant Street and the Joe King's Outlet on North Main Street in Concord offers an extensive line of athletic apparel too. Shorts, sweats, tees, running tights, and jackets. Joe King's and Joe King's Outlet, your sports connect. At Horizon Bank, we're neighbors, and serving you is our number one priority. That's why we'll never leave you hanging when it comes to your financial needs. Each time you call or visit Horizon Bank, you'll get a friendly greeting and prompt courteous service because we believe friends should never be kept out in the cold waiting too long. Whether you want to discuss checking services, savings plans, taking out a loan, or whatever, come on in. Our lines of communication are always open, always warm. Together, we're strong. Horizon Bank and Trust, 197 Loudon Road, Concord, member FDIC. Winnicott takes the uh, kickoff here following the Concord touchdown out to the 30-yard line. They have a first and 10 with a minute 47 seconds left here in the first quarter in a 6-6 a six, six tie. All right, the Warriors bring their eye to the 30-yard line. The quarterback on the option keeps, dances across the 30 to 35, out to the 40 before Concord can run him down. And I'll tell you this kid, Dave, that option beautifully. The 5'11 junior, very talented, very quick feet. And he's run the option beautifully here this afternoon. Well, he has picked up nice yardage on uh, several carries here. And this is only the second possession of the game for the Warriors. And each team marched down the field and scored. Conquered a dandy drive, 7 minutes, 18 seconds, 65 yards, 17 plays, two fourth down conversions along the way, and five first downs. Boy, if that doesn't bring a smile to Jack Addy's face, I don't know what will. All right, they flank. Well, a man way out here on the right side, and Pickett is looking for him, and he puts it short, and it's underthrown, and it'll be a second and ten. As there was a tremendous pass rush against Pickett by uh, our guy John Forrestal, who just got in on defense this afternoon, and he really came across and put a rush on Pickett and made him throw it early. Got to bring up a second down and ten yards to go now. Under a minute left here in the first. It's one for three for six yards, but that six yards was a, a touchdown pass. Also, Ben Bauer of the Crimson, Crimson Tide in there. He did a nice job rushing. He's a 5'11 sophomore and good speed. All right, Pickett with a the fake. They give it to the fullback. Carlin comes right up the middle of the field, the 45, the 50, down to the 45. Still on his feet at around the 40-yard line before coming down. Matt Carlin, the uh, eye back, came right across, and it took the handoff from Pickett and came right up the middle. And a great blocking by the Warrior kids right there to open up their... Uh, I back Matt Carlin. Beautiful play from scrimmage by the really Winnicott was. Warriors. Really was. I made a mistake on that, Harvey. Uh, Pickett is two for three for 11 yards in the play. One in of the them game. a five-yard touchdown pass. 6-6 six, six is the score. We are under a minute to play here in the first period. They flank a man wide on the right side. He starts back in motion, and he puts a good crackback block on the end, and that may be clipping right there as the fullback Carlin comes up across the line of scrimmage. I saw the man flanked out there for Winnicott, Kevin Cotella. When he came back, he cracked into John Forrestal, and uh, that may be clipping, uh, or maybe the flag is down there for another reason. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see. It is a clip. clip. Yep, yep. Butch. 
it's uh, very unusual for a play-by-play man to pick up a clip, but I was watching Kevin Cotell because I had just announced that he was out on the right flank, and then he started back toward the line, and I thought he was going to be involved in the handoff, but he wasn't. I was anticipating a handoff, and what he did was he cracked in to the back of the legs of John Forrestal. I saw that hit, and I saw the flag go down immediately, so it's going to back the Warriors up 15 yards. Well, it's uh, the second hanky to fly of the day, a five-yard penalty against Concord, and this is going to be a big one against the Winnicott Warriors. It's going to take them uh, from the Concord 43 back to their own 42-yard line, so that is really a, a problem for them now. They have been able to move the ball, Bruce, Winnicott, and they look fairly solid offensively. Uh, brings up a, a first and 25 for the Warriors. Beautiful yeah, they have day. looked very solid offensively today. We have 21 seconds last quarter, a 6-6 tie. Dave Pickett, a 5'11 junior, brings the I formation. No, he puts uh, triple receivers out on the right side. One lone back behind him is Colin. Is a ball, uh, bad hand, snap, and uh, he has to fall on it for even more loss right there. Or almost give it up, but Pickett uh, fell on the ball, and it's going to back it up two in a mile here. At the end of the first period of play with Winnicunit, with second down coming up and yardage. We are tied at we'll be back with the second quarter from the coast right after this. The area's family footwear center, Denroy Shoes, at 76 North Main Street in downtown Concord, invites you to the locker room. It's the new locker room at Denroy Shoes, and it's chock full of great Nike footwear and Nike clothing. The locker room at Denroy Shoes has Nikes for men, for women, and for children. The locker room at Denroy Shoes has Nike gym and book bags, Nike hats, Nike t-shirts, Nike sweats, and cool, comfortable Nike nylon jackets and pants. You'll love the selection, and you'll find the values outstanding. Of course, for athletic footwear, the locker at Denroy Shoes just can't be beat for selection. Men and women can choose a Nike shoe for every athletic activity, from walking to cross-training, from tennis to basketball, from cleating to running, from force to the Nike ear. So when it comes to athletic footwear, and when it comes to Nike, look to the locker room at Denroy Shoes, 76 North Main Street, in the heart of downtown Concord. Winnicott has dug themselves a pretty good hole here, second at 28 from their own 39-yard line. Pickett has the wind to his back, and he launches a bomb. It's up into the air here in the coast, and it is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver down there. Kevin Cotell, and it hit him right between his red numbers, 81, right between the 8 and the 1, and a very catchable ball, a long bomb launched by the quarterback, Pickett. And the Concord defender, too, uh, was playing the ball and not the player, and Cotell was wide open a yard or two behind the, the guy from Concord who jumped. I didn't catch whose number that was, but uh, he played the ball and not the, uh, not the guy, and it went right through his hands. And Tommy Marshall. Say, uh, it went right through Marshall's hands, and it hit code between the 8 and the 1. All right, Picked we have a, a third down in 28, and look for another picket bomb here. High formation for the Warriors. Fake, double reverse. Here comes Cotell around the left side, and he can't turn the corner as it is turned in nicely by the Concord High defense. And it was John Forrestal, the cornerback on that side, who just got the starting nod defensively for the first time in his career at Concord High. He's had a career at center on offense. And he lets the coaches know why he wanted to play defense so very badly because he made a great stop right there. They stopped Cotell for little or no gain on that. Fourth down to 28 from their own 39-yard line. He just ran out of real estate, Harvey. Cotell is back at his 25-yard line to punt. It's a good snap. The left-footed youngster gets his foot into the ball. It's coming down here to Concord High's Ekstrom at the 30. Fields it in traffic. He's up to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, and he's out near midfield before he runs out of real estate here on the coast. And a nice run back by Ekstrom, who fielded that punt in traffic and the sun glaring in his eyes. Wow. That was a nice pickup all the way from the 30, and they're going to spot the ball over midfield into Winnicott territories, territory rather, at about the 48-yard line, is that? It looks like they are in Winnicott territory already. Good run back. This is the 40th game for Jack Gaddy on the Concord High bench. And for Dick Gagne, it is his 58th. His 21st here in the state of New Hampshire, but he had four years of varsity coaching over in Springfield, Vermont. First down for the Tide. They give it to Milligan. He crosses the left side, and he wished he hadn't as he got stacked up there pretty well by a very stingy kind of defense, and he took a couple of good licks from Adam Kress, a 210-pound sophomore on that side, and from Matt Carlin, the linebacker on that side. Boy, did they stick him nice. 
touchdown, but he's going to pick up about a yard and a half on the play. That was just inside the 47-yard line, so it brings up a second down and eight for the Tide. Backs a split. Ekstrom in the slot on the left side. And the handoff goes to Shane Stafford out of the fullback slot. He turns the corner. He's across the 45, the 40, and down to the 35 of Winnicunna before running out of bounds. And that should be enough for a Ferdinand's and Tide. Looks like it will. And if it is, it, is, it will be their sixth of flag the down game. Post. Yeah, there is a flag on the play. It's going to be holding against the Tide, so never mind. Dick Gagne coached for four years as a head coach over in Springfield, Vermont. And uh, this is his third season at the helm here on the coast at Winnicott High School, his 21st game, he's 3-17 and 17 down here, but in defense of the 3-17, and 17, Winnicott was dealt low when the state football committee disbanded the Division II and Division I setup and put all the teams into a club to the fringe schools like Winnicott or Bishop Girton or in Exeter. They may revise that, though, in the next 12 months, I'm told. Second down for the Tide and Long, I see, Bruce. Second and 16 from their own 46. All right, they put Ekstrom just behind the tackle on the right side. Backs a split behind McGonagall here. And it is a double fake. McGonagall is back. All kinds of time. Puts it in the air. He's got a man. Ekstrom, he's got the ball at the 20. He's down to the 15. He fights his way to the 10 before being hauled down. And he had to wait the ball. Matt Ekstrom lined up right behind the guard and the tackle on the right side. And he snuck down there. He made his own little slot. And there was a double fake into the line by McGonagall. And he set up at his 35. McGonagall was all alone, and when he passed it down to the other 35, Ekstrom was all alone. 44-yard pass play on that, Harvey, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, carrying out the fakes made that play work because nobody went after McGonagall. He was all alone out there with a month to throw the ball. So the Crimson Tide are trying to go ahead here. They put Milligan in the slot on the right side. First man through, Mayo gets the call. He's down to about the five-yard line. Yeah, they can get a first without getting a score here. They uh, started from about the 10 and a foot yard, yard line. He's and it is at about the six. They've got to get to the one, maybe the half foot line for a first down. Second down and really goal to goal. 9.15 to play in the half here. 6-6 six, six if you're just joining us. A special hello to all our FM fans who are listening to high school football for the first time this afternoon. Yeah, welcome. Milligan slot right, backs a split behind a McGonagall. And they give the ball to James Stafford, and he dives ahead to about the five. The Winnicott kids close that down in a hurry. Some of our FM listeners may be tuning in wondering where the heck Jim Janot and Bruce Gillies are with high school, with high school, with UNH football this afternoon. When the Wildcats are off, they're resting up, getting ready for a big game next Saturday afternoon at Cowell Stadium against the Huskies of Northeastern. All right, Milligan, Mayo, Ekstrom, back, and timeout, Concord, the big moment in this first half here. We'll keep it right here as the Crimson Tide are at the five-yard line with a third down. They have to get to about the half-yard line for a first down. Last week against Spalding Bruce in this situation on a fourth and the same situation. It's third now, but Ryan McGonigal was hit at about the three and put his hands on the ball ahead and picked up that crucial first down by inches and it led to the touchdown. That, that's a tremendous comeback by uh, Concord last year, last week rather. It uh, seems like last year. <laughs> it fell a little short though against the defending state champions. And boy, I'll tell you, didn't Spalding prove their medal last uh, night against the Dover Green Wave, 35 to nothing. They sure did. The big weekend of football, the, uh, the rankings were really shaken up last night with the Exeter upset of Portsmouth. And uh, Dover's big loss to Spalding. Big, biggest game this afternoon, no question. Pinkerton at 6-0 and, oh. and Merrimack at 6-0 and down there at Merrimack fighting for number one this afternoon. Boy, uh, I'm really anxious to see the, the final score from that one. A lot of people are because the, uh, the computers are worrying beats this Merrimack, uh, Merrimack's going to drop to third and Spalding's going to go to second. Although the Dover people say they're still in second. They have enough points. Here we go, the Crimson Tide, third. And about four and a half for a first down from the five. It's a fumble. It's loose. Winnicott it falls on it at about the nine-yard line. Ryan McGonagall tried to gather up the loose football, but the Winnicott Warriors fell on it, and Matt Collins, the fullback who plays linebacker, came across and battled McGonagall for that ball, and they stopped the Crimson Tide right there, and that's a momentum breaker right there for the Warriors. Boy, it really is. Uh, they have it at their own nine-yard line on the fumble recovery with the flip. They... Uh, a tie score at 6-6 six to six here in Hampton this afternoon. 
And McGonagall came out of the shoot with that ball, but never really had control. And now the Warriors flank everybody out in a pro set. They give the ball to Cowell and the fullback. He comes across the 8, the 9, the 10, and to the 11. And the winner cut it would be content here to just run the ball for a few minutes and punt it out of here. They do have the wind to their back. I'll tell you, Harvey, as happy as that uh, first drive of the uh, 7 minutes, 18 seconds, 17 play scoring drive by Concord, uh, the Bay Jack Eddy smile. This one's got to have him pulling out what little hair he has left. All right, this time Pickett sends flankers wide on both sides. Colin the lone back behind him. They give it to another back on the reverse situation. He comes right across the 15 out to the 20, and if they spot the ball there, that'll be a big first down for Winnicott, and it is a first down on a nice little carry by Frank Dim, 5'8", Scatback Sr., who just hid in that backfield and came out with the ball on the first down. And it is the Warriors' fifth first down of the ball game, just over the 20-yard line at the 21. A lot going on around the state in high school football. We're going to talk to Chuck Young, the fine reporter for the Concord Monitor at halftime. The uh, fight last week between Dover and Portsmouth had a lot of ramifications for this weekend. Sure did. In motion goes Carlin. First man through, Daly gets the ball, and he stopped right at the line of scrimmage by the interior of Concord High's defense. Second down for the Warriors, seven minutes to play in the half. Six, six, if you're just joining us, we are at Winnicott High School in Hampton, New Hampshire. I'm Harvey Smith along with Bruce LaVoy, and uh, we have the pleasure of broadcasting on a great day here oh. in the late fall in New Hampshire. Yeah, as I say, this morning we were saying as we signed the station on the air, clouds this afternoon with a possibility of showers, but we still see no guy, nice little breeze coming through too. This field is set down in a bank, or bank all around the field, trees behind that, it's just beautiful. And back to pass is Pickett. He puts it in the air. He has a man open, and he can't hang on as he took a pretty good pop. He had the ball, but Shane Stafford put a tremendous hit on the intended receiver, Cotell. Cotell had it for about a second, and then Stafford unloaded, and he coughed it up. What a hit by Shane Stafford of yeah. Concord High. That's the only thing that pre uh, prevented the first down and the catch was Stafford's hit on Cotell. Stafford really came up and popped him right in the midsection just about the same time the ball got there. Maybe his second after is Harvey related to you. I had to breathe once in a while. It would help probably. 6-6 <laughs> six, six your score. <laughs> that surprised you. It shouldn't, folks. Winnicott has played a lot of tough teams tough this year. Nice play action fake by the quarterback, and he gives it to Daly, who comes over that 25-yard line out to about the 26. He faked a pitch and came back with a little inside hand off to Daly, and Daly delivered the ball out to about the 27, but it won't be enough. It's a punting situation for the Warriors. Needed eight yards on the play. They picked up about four of that, so indeed it is going to be a punt with the wind to their back. All right, Cotell, left-footed, booms one up Ooh. into the uh, here. Ekstrom fields it at his 35, and he is immediately dropped at the 35-yard line. And uh, Matt did not signal for a fair catch, and he didn't want to let the ball bounce with the wind blowing that way because the it would have rolled for quite a few yards, and so he salvages the ball and a 36-yard line position for the Crimson Tide, and now Cargett's got his work cut out for it. 6-6 six, six to score here, 5.50 to play in the first half. Well, they've proven that they can move the ball against the Warriors, as has been the case on the other side of the ball as well, but they have the opportunity here with plenty of time left, 5 minutes and 40 seconds left in the half. They got time to move down the field. Ekstrom slot left side. McGonagall rolls right, tries to put the ball in the air, avoids the tackle, puts it out here, and he overthrows Rob Sawyer. And that's not easy to do as Rob at 6'6", six, six, or was Blake Savoy, excuse me, and uh, he just, Blake reached up, but the ball was still inches too high, and McGonagall, under a lot of pressure, unloaded a fairly decent pass on the dead run. Absolutely, Ryan uh, was about to get hit there, and he did unload that ball. It was a good throw, make no mistake about it, but it was just off the fingertips of Savoy down here, about 30 yards. All right, key formation look for the Tide for the first time in about five snaps of the ball. Second man through, Milligan gets the call. Head 5, 10, 15 yards out to the fifth play by Andy Milligan. A hard work in six foot, 188 pound senior. And Andy gets the tide, a much needed first down. They're seventh of the first half. They are starting to pile up some statistics here on the ground. And of course, a big 44 yard pass play that went for naught because that was a couple of plays before the fumble that gave Winnicott kind of the chance on the ball. They are into Warrior territory now at the 48 yard line. First down for the tide from the 48. 
formation again. Second man through. Andy Milligan gets the call. No, McGonagall fools me. He keeps. He goes around the left side. He turns the 45 down near the 40-yard line. Nice fake by McGonagall to Milligan who had just carried for 17 yards, and I thought Andy had the ball, and I'll admit it, Ryan fooled me. Great fake by the junior quarterback. Now, what a cut out was to show who had the ball either. <laughs> they were still standing up around the 45-yard line, but the ball is spotted one. Nice pickup of seven yards on the play. Brings up a second down and three. There's a lot of things you can do in this situation. I'd call it an eight-yard gain from my perspective here. Okay. These old eyes. All right, Milligan gets the call this time. First down as he lumbers ahead, just barely, or am I premature? We'll see where they spot it. It seemed like he had it from up here. He, he went across left tackle. Marshall threw a great block to set it up for Andy here. We'll see where they spot the football. I think they're going to flip it to a one and move the chains down it the is. field myself. Yep. First down for the Crimson Tide. One of many here in Eight. the first half. Eight first downs, and it's a 6-6 six, six ball game. Remember, Nashua at 5-1 and one, almost fell to win it kind of this year. It was 14-12 to 12 down there in Holman Stadium. This is a pesky ball club. Shane Stafford gets the pitch. Left side to the 40, to the 35, down to the 30, inside to the 25-yard line as he's run out. Of he was quick on that play. Took a pitch from the fullback position and just scooted the left corner. Yeah, now where they spot this ball? First well, down. I thought it was going to be closer than they apparently figured it was. It did go out of bounds on the far side, right next to the chain gang. So I guess they uh, were able to pick it up that way. I wasn't real sure. I knew it was going to be close, but that is the ninth first down of this uh, first half. <laughs> Excuse me, for Are you okay, buddy? <laughs> I really ought to stop and breathe once in a while. Well, T formation for the tide. Second man through, gets the call, it's Mayo, he lumbers ahead, off right tackle, across the 25, down to the 20, inside to the 18-yard line. Mike Mayo crossed the, from his left to his right and went right up between the blocking of Dave Vlossage and Eric Woods, and he ran the ball beautifully down to the 19 after the spot. Nice pickup on the play. You don't sound too good, partner. I know, I don't know what in the world's going on here all of a sudden. Oh, maybe I'll have to have our on-site uh, director here go down and get me something to drink. I'll tell you one thing. If I lost your voice, what would the fans do out there? <laughs> Second down and two for the Tide. They pitch it to Shane Stafford. He tries the right corner to the 20, to the 18, to the 15, 14 out of bounds. And a first down for the Crimson Tide as Shane Stafford out of that fullback spot. A 5'8", junior, very speedy over here on the coast this afternoon. Gets the Tide, yet another first down. And is there a flag down? Uh, no, we nope. have a winner cutter player down on the field and back out of about the 16-17 yard line. But boy, I'll tell you, thank you. Star Stafford really uh, can move down that field. He was fast right here, and they are attending to the Warrior, and I don't know if there's going to be an elongated delay here or not. Uh, give us a chance to congratulate Chris Byers of the Concord High School cross-country team, who won the individual awards for the Capital City Cross-Country Championship last night at White's Park. Chris not only won the race, but he broke a 13-year-old course record. If you know anything about the history of cross country at Concord High Folk, you know that a lot of great runners have been over that course. And uh, he gets the new record last night, uh, breaking the 13-year record set by Pete Finney back in 1978. So congratulations to Chris Byers and the Concord winning. The Concord High girls, is an interesting story, uh, were favored to win. And uh, halfway through the race, Bruce, were in a position to win. And uh, one of the Concord High girls succumbed to the heat and went down. And another teammate came along and attended to her, and the both huh. of them did not finish, and they did take the girl to the hospital. And uh, quite a human interest story behind that one as they gave up the victory to attend to a fallen runner. Really was. Well. <laughs> All right, the Tide here. They're at the 13-yard line of Winnick 6 over here, late in the first half on the coast. Milligan gets the call, left tackle inside the 10, down to about the 6-yard line. Andy Milligan on the carry for the Crimson Tide. Now, the last time Cockett was down here on the five, they coughed it up for the fumble. Let's see if they can hang on and break the tie here. Three minutes to play from the coast. First half, second down and three. Cockett High could get a first down without punching it in. T formation for the tie. Long count. Milligan gets the call again. Left tackle. He's across the five, down to the four. They've got to get to about the three for a first down, so it's going to ring up a huge third down play for the Crimson Tide, and conversely, a huge third down play for the Warrior defense. Speaking of huge, I'll tell you what, that was a huge pile of humanity right there at about the three and a half yard line. Where they spot the ball, three yard line, it's uh, uh, third down and one. Third and one for a first down from the four. 
Cockett High, four yards away from going ahead in this ball game. They give it to Mayo, and he goes to the three, and then he's bounced back rudely as he twists down to the two, but I think they'll spot it back at the three. Forward, it's going to be really, really close. Forward momentum should, I think, give them a first and goal, but they are going to call for a measurement on this play, and uh, they uh, spot the ball down very close to the two-yard line, which is where he had to get just inside the three, actually. When it kind of played Dover very tough this year, they almost upset Nashua down at Hallman Stadium on a Friday night early in the year. They've been able to move the football against most teams here in the uh, Seacoast. And uh, here comes the important spot of the chains, and it looks like a first down for the Crimson Tide. First goal from the two. And he had it from, by a yard, Harvey. He did. <laughs> and you're still not sounding good. I'm worried about you. Now I'm going to have Jeremy go down and get me a Coke before too much longer. 2.16 left here in the first half of play, and a 6-6 six, six tie from Hampton. All right, Conker wants to hang on to the football right now. T formation from the two-yard line. They want to break the tie. They give it to Milligan, left tackle. He dances straight ahead, but he's not going to cross. The Warrior defense stiffens down there. Adam Kress, a 6'4", 2'10", sophomore, and Jeremy Gilbert on that side. Stack up Milligan right at the one-yard line. Second and goal to go for the Crimson Tide. Of course, there is a hitch. If I send Jeremy down to get a Coke, he's got to get something, too. I mean, that's the way it works when you're a kid, right? That's right. <laughs> Second and goal from the one-yard line. All right, a one-yard separating Concord High from uh, taking the lead here on the coast. Milliken is in the fullback spot right now. He gets the call straight ahead. No, Ekstrom gets the call. Right side, dives ahead, touchdown Concord. They take the lead, 12-6. They faked it to Milliken, in Milliken into the center of the line, and then they gave it to Ekstrom, and um, Matty gets his second touchdown of the game. Yeah, two, uh, two scoring runs, a total of two yards, and 12 points for the youngster. <laughs> Not a bad production, I'll tell you. It is not. Uh, the kids were riding him pretty good this week at, at Concord High for having the least amount of yards uh, carried of all the five or six kids that carry the football for Concord High. Well, he's answered his, uh, his teammate critics, if you will, this afternoon with some great runs and two touchdowns. Concord's going for two right now on the extra point try. Milligan gets the call. Loma McGonagall keeps. He puts the ball in the air. It bounces around. It's up in the air, and it falls short. As both Blake Savoy and Matty Ekstrom had chances at that football bouncing around in the end zone, and once again, the Warriors stifle a try for the extra point by the Crimson Tide. But Concord takes a 12-6 lead with one and a half minutes to play here in the second period. We'll be right back. At Horizon Bank, we're proud to serve you, our neighbors and friends, because working together, we've made this community strong. Please visit us often and let us know how we're doing at Horizon We care about making our services as complete and convenient as possible. Through continued teamwork, we'll ensure your success and the success of the entire community. Now that's financial muscle. Together, we're strong. Horizon Bank and Trust, 197 Loudon Road, Concord, member FDIC. For comfort and style, Chantic Apparel is the rage this fall and winter. New shop at 18 Pleasant Street, Concord offers a large selection of sweatshirts, sweatpants, shorts, and t-shirts, each in the wide variety of colors, style, and sizes you've been waiting for. So whatever your sport, look to Joe King's Shoe Shop for all your athletic footwear, apparel, and accessories. Joe King's for personal professional service. Open Thursday and Friday evenings. All right, the winner cut a kickoff. Uh, Concord's kickoff was run by the Warriors out to about their 31-yard line. Pickup of about 16 yards on the run back, Harvey. And uh, the Concord scoring drive, 64 yards, 12 plays, 4 minutes and 23 seconds. Uh, Matt Ekstrom with a one-yard touchdown dive, his second score of the afternoon. All right, Dave Pickett, that quarterback, eye formation. He dances back to pass. He avoids the tackle. No, he doesn't avoid it. He gets thrown to the ground by a great rush. Dave Velosic came in to pick it by the shirt. It looked like the quarterback was going to elude Velosic, but then Velosic, as he fell to the ground, pulled the picket down with him. And it's a loss of six yards on the play. Brings up a second down at 16 for the Warriors here this afternoon. The Bishop Brady Green Giants are on the road to Brockton, Massachusetts this afternoon, playing Cardinal Spellman. The Giants need a win today or against Franklin next Friday night to get into the MS playoffs. They better get it today. They certainly better. <laughs> High formation. Ticket. Fake pass. Gives it to the fullback Carl, and he comes ahead. Bounces off a tackler at the 25. Bounces off another one at the 25. Moves to the 26 and gets piled on by the remaining nine kids of Crockett High who didn't get a shot at him early. 
I'll tell you, everybody had a shot in there. And Carlin did a lot of running for virtually no gain on the play. When it kind of takes a timeout with four seconds left, and that, this is an aggressive, aggressive move by them, content to go into the locker room down six uh, points, 12 to six. But Dick Gagne heads into that huddle, Bruce, and uh, I have to think with the wind of the back, they've got to come up with some kind of special play here. Well, Gagne said there are no clubs left in the bag, and uh, that's the way it's going to be right here. With four seconds left, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, yeah. We're going to well, talk we'll to uh, Chuck Young, the monitor reporter. A lot of football to be covered in our halftime this afternoon. We'll, we'll try to set up the playoff picture for you. Concord High very much alive, but they're going to need a win here this afternoon. And when it kind of is not making it easy this afternoon, and then they're going to need the unenviable task of uh, beating Dover in Dover next Friday night. And you know the Green Wave are going to be up for that game. Yeah, they got uh, walloped pretty good last night by Spalding, but they will be ready for any and all comers from this point forward. And uh, they were just caught a little off guard and depleted because of the situation that was so eloquently put forth by Harvey and the Dover coach last Friday, uh, last Saturday afternoon, rather, here on WKXL. That uh, melee, what an ugly side. So I taped some of that through the week, and boy, that, that was just plain ugly. All right, one snap of the football for the Warriors. They have triple receivers out on the right side. And they try reverse. It's going to be a left-handed pass by uh, Kotel. He stops as he across the line of scrimmage. The ball is received. It's caught down by the 45-yard line. Time runs out. Kotel, a left-handed youngster, gets up his shoulder pads out of his shirt down there. He's in complete disarray because he got popped pretty well as he let it go. The pass was complete, but there's a flag down. I thought he crossed the line of scrimmage before I, he threw it. I think he did, Harvey, too. And uh, we'll have to see whether, uh, if it comes down to that, whether that is ruled a completion, because I, I think the kid dropped it myself. It, it, but uh, I don't know if the it, official time is down on the field. The school board uh, has run out of seconds down there. They're talking to Concord High, so obviously it's against Winnicott. It's, uh, the penalty is denied. And that will end the half because it's the offensive team that is being penalized. So with the score, Concord High 12 and Winnicott 6. This first half comes to a close. And it was a well-played half as both teams well, very, very precise with long marches. And Winnicott is proving to be as tough as Jack Addy figured and maybe even tougher than the entire Concord High camp would figure over here this afternoon as it is only 12 to 6. And it's a win that Concord High desperately needs. They've played so tough against Spalding and Portsmouth in the last two weeks. And uh, the Winnicott Warriors are playing outstanding two-way football here this afternoon. Visible for the Crimson Tide. So it hurts himself, and uh, we'll try to get some uh, in, something into him to ease that throat for him. And we'll get Chuck Young up here and get his thoughts on what's going down on that field because he's been down on the sideline. We'll put together our halftime show for you, everybody. From the coast, it is Concord at 6 and a Winnicott at uh, Concord 12. And when it kind of six, we'll be right back. Stay with us for halftime. You know, high school sports are a source of great interest and pride, not only for the schools involved, but the communities they represent. High school sports help bring a community together, providing a common focus to care about and to cheer for. Now, because of this important role in the lives of our communities, high school sports are about a lot more than winning and losing. They are about working together and growing together. And that's why high school sports are such a tradition. And the Capital City Law Firm of Rath, Young, Pignatelli, and Oyer, on behalf of its clients and friends, is pleased to be a part of this tradition by helping to bring these broadcasts to our community. And even more pleased to be part of a community that cares so much for its young people. Okay, we are back here at Hampton at Winnicott High School where the Crimson Tide hold a 12-6 lead over the tough Winnicott Warriors here this afternoon. I say tough, they came in at 1-5, and five, but as Harvey has related to you several times here this afternoon during the broadcast, they've played a number of teams pretty tough this year, including the, what, 7-1 and one Nashua Purple Panthers, or soon to be 7-1, and one, if they uh, complete their schedule the way that, uh, that they are expected to. But at any rate... It is a pretty good game here this afternoon. We hope you're enjoying it here on WKXL AM and FM. When it comes to the opening kickoff, March 70 yards, eight plays, two minutes, 42 seconds, a five-yard touchdown pass by uh, um, Dave Pickett to uh, Kevin Cotel. The point after touchdown kick was no good, six to nothing with uh, when it comes on top. Hawkins would take its uh, 
Uh, the winner cut its uh, kickoff and marched down the field. Uh, 65 yards, 17 plays, 7 minutes and 18 seconds. Matt Ekstrom, a one-yard touchdown run, point after touchdown was no good. Six to six, that's where the first quarter ended. Target High uh, would uh, lose an opportunity to punch a score in on a fumble play late in the second quarter, about midway through the second quarter, actually. They had the ball on their own nine-yard line and fumbled the thing away. They had a uh, third down and four yards, actually on the five-yard line. Winner kind of got the ball on their own nine-yard line and were not able to do anything with it. They punted it away to Concord, and uh, Concord was put together a 64-yard drive, 12 plays, 4 minutes and 23 seconds, and punch in the score on another one-yard touchdown run by Matt Ekstrom again. The point after touchdown was missed. This time it was a pass by Ryan McGonico. A couple of kids in the end zone had an opportunity to come down with the ball, but we at 12 to 6, and that's where we are at halftime. Unofficially, Concord with 11 first downs in the first half, 10 of them on the ground, one through the air. Uh, I have Ryan McGonigal for one for three for 44 yards. On the other side, five first downs, four winner cut it. All of them coming on the ground, and uh, the um, uh, passing route uh, for Pickett is two for five for 11 yards, one of those five-yard touchdown pass. So here we are at 12 to six with Concord High School on top of the winner cut High School Warriors at halftime here on WKXL AM and FM on a beautiful afternoon for football as we approach the 3 o'clock hour here on the Sports Voice of the Capital Region. We have a couple of spots to take. We will be back with more Harvey Smith and Chuck Young from the coast after this two-minute timeout. Bobby Young and the staff of Young East Florist at 30 Manchester Street in Concord would like to take this opportunity to wish everyone associated with the Cosh Brady football teams the very best of luck during their respective 1991 football seasons. You know, high school sports play a very important role in any successful community. And through the dedicated hard work put in by the staff and members, the Crimson Tide and Green Giant players learned to work together as a team, each member completing their assignment in order to accomplish a common team goal. Now, the teamwork learned by this year's group on the rosters of Bishop Brady and Concord High, a lifelong lesson on how to accomplish a common goal through athletics, knowing that how you play the game will become examples of how you go through life long after one has covered the 100 yards on the football field. This message from your florist in Concord, Young East Florist, 30 Manchester Street. And again, good luck to both Concord High and Bishop Brady. The Coffee Mill is a specialty shop featuring fine gourmet items, gifts, gift baskets, the finest of coffees and teas from around the world. Serving mouth-watering muffins, croissants, cheesecake to be topped off with hot, freshly brewed espresso, cappuccino, or cafe latte from the extensive specialty coffee menu, to mention but a few. The Coffee Mill, North Main Street, right across from the State House. Folks who are proud to be a part of downtown Concord. <laughs> Whether your sport is running, aerobics, basketball, rollerblades, or football, Joe King Shoe Shop has a large selection of styles and sizes to fit your every need. Top manufacturers like Reebok, Adidas, Saucony, and New Balance ensure the quality you expect and deserve. 18 Pleasant Street and the Joe King's Outlet on North Main Street in Concord offers an extensive line of athletic apparel, too. Shorts, sweats, tees, running jacks, and jackets. Joe King's and Joe King's Outlet, your sports connection. All right, we are back here at Winnicott at High School in the seacoast town of Hampton. I'm Harvey Smith for WKXL Sports. And uh, it is 12 to 6 at halftime. As uh, we, uh, we have Chuck Young in the, uh, the booth, and uh, we want to make sure, Bruce, that uh, he's wired for sound and he can hear our voices. Chuck, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Hear me? <laughs> that a baby. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. uh, if I, All right. Okay, let's go. 12 to 6 down here. Uh, Concord leading. Does the score, score surprise you, Chuck? Not at all. It should be 18 to 6, and if not with the extra points, uh, Concord is dominating both lines of scrimmage. Aside from that first drive in which Winnicott looked really sharp, uh, Concord quickly made adjustments, and uh, Concord is doing is pretty much doing everything right. If you take away that one fumble, they've got another touchdown, and uh, it's, it's a simple case of uh, of Concord having more size and more depth than Winnicott, although Winnicott does have some really nice speed talent in their backfield, some good, uh, not just speed once they get free, but good quickness inside the uh, inside the traps and counters they've tried to run. Had some success with right off the bat. Uh, so you, you don't, you've don't you been down on the sidelines, and uh, you don't fear a letdown. You see Concord in control of this game, do you? Uh, they're really pretty much in control and doing what they want to do. Uh, Winnicott is 
has been stingy when it's gotten inside the 20, as most defenses are. But uh, Concord, again, just too, they can keep bringing in fresh legs on both the line and in the backfield. And uh, Winnick kind of doesn't have that luxury, unfortunately, for them. And it's really right now, it's, it's pretty much Concord's game to lose. If they, uh, they'll get the kickoff in the second half, uh, if they put another touchdown on them, they should be in pretty good shape. I don't see Winnick kind of being able to score more than uh, maybe another touchdown, maybe two touchdowns if they're lucky. The um, obviously means an awful lot to Jack Gaddy and the kids uh, if they entertain hopes of uh, getting into the playoffs. And, uh, you know, a win here and then uh, an all-out effort against Dover uh, when they could not only get Concord into the playoffs, but could get them into a fairly good bracket. Chuck. Yeah, what, what Jack is hoping is if they win these last two games, he can get a, a number seven seed, which would, which would be good. They'd still be playing on the road all the way through the playoffs, but at the same time, uh, they might draw might draw a little bit um, easier to handle opponents than they would otherwise. You don't want that number eight seed, then you're going to have to run right into Pickerton in the first round. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> uh, he sees uh, Spalding and uh, Dover and uh, Portsmouth and Concord and Nashville and all those teams fairly even, and I think I agree with them. I would have to, uh, based on based on what I've seen with Concord against the, so some of those teams, uh, Concord is certainly capable of beating Spalding. Had they put two good halves of football year last week, they probably would have. Uh, the second half showed you just how just how good Concord can um, when everything is going their way, and it was um, in the second half last week. Against Portsmouth, again, that's a game they could have won and handed it to them with a couple of untimely turnovers. Um, but this is the kind of Concord team that's going to have to do everything right to, uh, to, to get things done and advance the playoffs. They can't afford mistakes because they don't have that breakaway talent that the Pinkertons have and that, and that the Dover appears to have. They need to, they need to play good discipline football, the kind of football that Gaddy stresses week in, week out. And uh, this game is very important in a you know, solid fashion. And with Dover come last night, that surprise upset loss last night, uh, I would think that that might bode well for Concord. They catch it. It's going to be one of two things. Dover's going to be really fired up to, to get some payback, <laughs> or it's going to be uh, Concord trying to uh, take advantage of a down team. That's right. You know, and Bruce and I were talking about that on the way over here today. You don't know how kids are going to react here. They, uh, I'm sure Dover had their sights on an undefeated season heading into the playoffs. As, you know, high school teenagers should uh, try to achieve a goal like that. And once that's been snapped, you know, really, it, it takes almost a sports psychologist to go in and, and address a situation like that. Now, do they have enough to come back and make a season out of it, or is this going to snap their bubble for the rest of the year? Well, it could. The, the, the attitude they could very well fall prey to, and, and if you're a Concord fan, you hope they fall prey to, is that they'll say, well, we lost one, and we don't need to worry about Concord because we're in the playoffs anyway, and we're, we've only got two losses if we lose to them. We'll still get a pretty good seating. We can just sort of blow this game off and keep everybody healthy for the playoff stretch run. And... Uh, now, I'm sure that the Dover coaching staff is going to try everything they can do to, uh, to avert that attitude, taking root in their team. But I think that uh, if you're a Concord fan, you're hoping that's exactly what's going through those kids' minds at Dover High School next week. And the Concord is certainly will be fired up. They're very fired up down the sidelines today. They're very intense. They're very focused. And that seems to be the word these days. They're very focused on what they want to accomplish. And they're going to have to be because it's not going to be an uh, easy environment to play in down there at Dover High next Friday night. I was so impressed with Concord High's performance last week in the second half against Spalding. I haven't seen an effort out of kids like that since the championship team. They really they accomplished everything they wanted to do in that second half except they didn't get one more touchdown. Uh, it, was, it was, again, it was textbook Concord football, moving the ball, controlling the clock. And on defense, they contained the people on the corners, which is what the Concord defense has to do. Concord has a size in the middle, pretty much anything that tries to go through the center of a line. What they have to be wary of with every team they play is containing any kind of outside threat because they don't have great speed in that defensive backfield, and they have to contain on the corners right at the line of scrimmage. And they did that against uh, a very talented Spalding team that had some really nice athletes in that backfield. We are at halftime here on the coast. Concord 12, a winner cut at 6 this afternoon at halftime. We're talking to Chuck Young, the reporter for the Concord Monitor, and a special hello to our new fans along the line today, our 102.3 FM fans. If you tuned in looking for UNH Wildcat football, the Wildcats have a well-deserved weekend off, and uh, stay tuned for high school football. We'll keep you abreast of what's going on around the state in high school football. And uh, we're talking, uh, what we're really doing is setting the stage for next week's big showdown with Concord and Dover. Dover lost its first game last night, the neighborhood rival 35, uh, Spalding 35 to nothing. And one other thing emotionally and psychologically for Dover, Chuck, is that the, the coaches and the kids could say, well, we have a built-in excuse. They had six kids who were sat down for fighting last night and didn't play in the Spalding game, and so they have that excuse. Coaches hate that kind of excuse thing, but it's exactly what a kid will think yep. at that age. And it's no knock on kids. Hey, when I was that age, I thought the same thing. Um, 
the thing about I was surprised. I'm not completely surprised that Spalding won that game because they're a very talented football team. I am surprised by the margin. That's um, what Bruce and you, you just have to wonder um, what kind of effect will that have. And, and as a Concord High follower, you hope and, and I hope that that will keep them down for just one more week. Yep. Concord can take advantage of the psychological aspects next week. But then again, it is it is Dover's uh, Dover's regular season home finale. A lot of the, their seniors will certainly be. Uh, very enthusiastic and trying to play their best game. Uh, there's going to be a lot of psychological factors at work next Friday night, and it should be a whale of a ball game. For anybody who's planning to go down, I would highly advise it. The thing you have to look at very closely, though, as far as the Dover excuse goes, they were missing six ball players last night, but they were all from the defensive unit. Mm -hmm. Not one offensive starter was out of the Dover lineup, mm -hmm. and they, they could not put the football in against Baldwin. And you just can't pull the wool over kids' eyes on that one. They did not execute offensively last night. Right. It's, 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 it's uh, you know, you, you can't put, at this stage of the season, when teams are really seasoned, when they've had a lot of games and a lot of experience, you can't put that many young bodies in and expect to get it done, especially against a team as talented as Spalding High. Um, but I, again, I think that Concord, Concord knows at this point that it, it, to control its own destiny, it has to win. It has to play yep. very precise football. And that's what to try and get them to do. Um, Jack is the kind of guy that doesn't spend a lot of time worrying about opponents, as you probably know, uh, unless they're unless they're extremely talented. He wants his if he figures if his team does its job, they will get the W, and that's what he's trying to coach from um, he's right now. And I'm sure he'll be thinking it again all next week and then Friday night. If you look at any sport, yeah, any great coach at the helm will will tell you that that he's more interested in his kids and how they perform, and that most good coaches can make adjustments on the sideline. Anything that the scouting thing is over, it's way overblown. Uh, that you really got to get your own kids ready for a ball game. And I think the Concord coaches are very good at making those kind of adjustments. You saw that last week. Spalding had so much success with, with, a ver with a variety of plays in the first half. In the second half, those plays got to nothing, absolutely nothing. And today, right after when Akunit drove down the field and scored on his very first possession, taking the opening kickoff and driving down and scoring that touchdown, uh, Bob Cameron's off the coaches up here in the press box. Then Jack Eddy and, and Cameron are down there on the sidelines. They're talking about what they need to do. They're making the adjustments. Winnicott doesn't score again. Meantime, Concord adjusts to Winnicott's defense after its first drive, and they see what they're having success with and what they're not having as much success with, and they go right back next time they get the ball and, and pound away at those things until they get it done. Uh, Concord's coaches are very good at that, making tactical adjustments in the middle of a game. Chuck, the, uh, the fight between Dover and Portsmouth uh, a week ago uh, last night, uh, we talked about the six kids that were sat down mm -hmm. last night for Dover. Portsmouth High, I think they had a greater effect in their game with Exeter. They lost seven kids, uh, mm -hmm. four defensively and two offensively, but uh, linemen. And uh, I think perhaps the, uh, the, the ruling about the kids uh, having to miss the game hurt Portsmouth more in its uh, loss to Exeter last night than it did Dover. It probably did. Exeter is a team that's always well coached, but they should, but they, but they don't have a great amount of talent. They're a kind of team that doesn't usually hurt themselves, but they're usually not very much able to hurt you either. But then, when you have a situation where they're taking on a team that's lost a lot of its lineup for whatever the reason, um, they're, they're a very dangerous team. I know year in and year out, Jack is very worried about Exeter. Um, as far as Portsmouth goes, yeah, the ruling definitely hurt them worse. But at the same time, the ruling was pretty equitable, just because yep. something had to be done. You can't have that kind of situation in high school football. And, uh, the minute I heard about it, all I could think was, thank goodness it didn't happen in our area, so we don't have to get in that uh, in that shooting match oh, because boy. there's a lot of uh, a lot of hot tempers and a lot of short fuses involved in, uh, Let me in, ask you, did, in that did situation. Did you see the films at all? I have not seen I the films. I have not either. And uh, I've talked to people who have yep. seen the films, and it's, it, it, it's no knock on Channel 12. It's just very difficult to tell from the films who is at fault. It's just that it seems like all of a sudden there's a melee, and you really can't pinpoint where it, where it takes place unless you're looking at it very closely. Um, Again, I, it's a situation where both teams deserve to be equally punished, and yep. the suspensions were handed out, and uh, fortunately the chain crews were, were disciplined there at Dover High. Uh, I, I got down here today, in fact, I turned to the people on the Winnicott chain crew, I said, am I safe over here? And they, <laughs> and they laughed, and they said, when we jump, when we say jump, you say how high, ma'am. So, uh, <laughs> so we, got a little, we got a good relationship going down there. But, uh, but the, the thing you have to remember about it is, is they are volunteers, but at yep. the same time, um, they're representatives of the school they're working for, and I'm sure that the Dover High people, Ken Laporto, the athletic director down there, I'm sure they were very disappointed in that. Um, it's just not a good situation. It's not healthy for anyone involved. The uh, the upshot is that Dover was on the road last night, so now uh, they will get a home game again the next Friday night, and Concord High happens to be the opponent. And I really don't have any fear about going down there because I think the Dover school administration, which is a solid one, by the way, mm -hmm. will be in complete control, and I'm just, I'm sure security will be great down there. I'm, I'm absolutely positive that, uh, that, that Mr. Laporto and his associates down there will, will have taken command, 
and taking care of all the elements that might cause any problems down at Dover High. If that's a fear, if you're sitting home thinking, geez, I'd like to go, but I don't know if I, if I want to get I that can. I don't think it's a fair thing to think because I think Dover will definitely take control of the situation. Uh, problem with Dover High is you can't sit in their visiting stands. They've been <laughs> they have a very nice, uh, very nice home grandstand, as I recall from going down there a couple years ago. It's a uh, it's very modern and uh, and there's plenty of room down there for yep. both the home fans and the visiting fans. It shouldn't be any kind of problem if you're going if you're worried about it at all. Have any apprehensions? I'd say don't worry and go down and enjoy what should be a really a, a good smash mouth football game. It, it will be and don't forget Dover High with a lot of talent went one in seven last year. The one victory against Concord High in the last regular season. No, Jack and the kids are remembering that, and they want to return this year. Absolutely. That, that was a game that, uh, again, there was a situation last last year where Concord was uh, was a little down going into that game because of the suspensions, and that just shows you what can happen. But now it's Concord's turn to say, hey, we're going to put the blemish on your season. We're going to come down here into your, into your house and do some damage. And uh, I, know the con- I know that's on the Concord kids' minds. I know they're going to want to exact some revenge and, and, and do what they can do down there, which is assure themselves of a good playoff spot and a chance to advance. Because nobody wants to get that number eight draw and uh, go right down to the dairy and Pinkerton Academy and run into that buzzsaw. Okay, let me get your opinion before you go back to work, Chuck. Uh, big game this afternoon down on the southern part of New Hampshire. Pinkerton at 6-0, and visiting Merrimack at 6-0. and And uh, last year, I believe, Pinkerton's only loss going into the playoffs at 7-1 was to neighborhood rival Merrimack. That game has so many repercussions. High bitter rivalry. I like I like Pinkerton just because they're talent, but the problem, and a lot of people have talked about this in the past, the uh, often spoken criticism of Pinkerton is that their teams peak early. Um, they were certainly in midseason form when they beat Concord um, early in the season, and you have to wonder if, they, if they're if uh, they going to go in there too cocky. I know that their coach is going to try really hard, Mr. O'Reilly, to, uh, to work against that, but... Uh, game is at Merrimack, is it not? It is at Merrimack. I think that definitely, that, that's worth three or four points to Merrimack right there, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Merrimack, but to be honest with you, I don't I don't want to take any chances and pick that one up, but I would I would, I would say Pickerton probably has more talent. Merrimack maybe has a little bit more discipline. It's just a question of who uh, who makes mistakes in a game like that. You know, I've heard the criticism of Pickerton through the years by other coaches about uh, the team's peaking uh, too early. Pickerton's best part of the schedule was in the first three weeks. They played Portsmouth, Spalding, and Concord, and since then, they really haven't had a easy game. They've had laughers. That's not going to help them. No, it doesn't. It, it, it's sharp when you go out and you and you take an early lead and then just sort of hang around until the uh, final whistle blows. Um, it, that, that can't keep a team sharp. And uh, I would think Merrimack has played a little bit tougher schedule in the middle of the season. They're eyeing their schedules a little bit later than Pickerton's, and I think perhaps that will help them uh, That will help them be a little bit sharper, a little bit more focused going into that game. Okay, last question, Chuck. I want it for the record. I want all the Capital <laughs> Area fans to hear it. Your prediction, uh, World Series, Atlanta, and uh, Minneapolis. Braves in six, no problem. And we'll start doing the tomahawk chop right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a uh, true southern gentleman, everybody, picking the Braves in six. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Harvey. All right. Chuck Young of the Concord Monitor picking the Atlanta Braves. How did I know he was going to do that? Chuck from the south, as you all can tell. Here at Winnicott High School, the Crimson Tide 12. Winnicott at six. We'll be ha- back here with the second half for you right after this. Stay with us. Here's an offer that you can hardly refuse. It's an offer to have your home, auto, or business insurance reviewed by the friendly professionals at the Allied Insurance Agency. How much will this complete insurance review cost you? Not one red cent. That's right, the Allied Insurance Agency will provide a professional analysis of your present insurance at absolutely no obligation. Incidentally, when was the last time you checked your insurance coverage on your home or business? Conditions change, you know. The number of drivers in the family may have changed. Your insurance coverage written last year is not necessarily the best insurance today. Allied represents many solid New Hampshire insurance companies, and the Allied Agency will review your... ...as uh, Winnicott is headed out to center field. The Concord captain's coming across the field from the far sidelines. And we had heard uh, rumors about uh, rain in the forecast, uh, a few showers cloudy skies and rather dreary conditions over here on the seacoast. I don't know what it's like back in Concord, Harvey, but you couldn't ask for better football weather here uh, 50 miles to the east. It's really nice. A little bit of a breeze coming off the ocean, I'm sure. And uh, We're <laughs> not in the chilly. sun, so it's chilly in the press box, but it's very comfortable for the fans out there. A lot of them in short sleeves or sweatshirts and the collars coming out, but not too many in jackets. Kind of a uh, one of those interesting sidebar stories, human interest, that will warm the hearts of the fans back at home. Damon Osgood, uh, Ryan McGonigal's stepfather, won the uh, 50-50 raffle over here, and it's always nice to see ah. the somebody from the visiting stands 
come away with those 50-50 prizes on the road. And, uh, and he was a happy camper going down out of the stands sure. here. And we promised to mention that if he took us out to supper. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> All the uh, kidding. I saw this teddy bear of a man with his crimson shirt on and, and fistful of dollars running out of the stands. And I, and I just saw the back of him and I said to the stadium, and I said, what goes with him? And he said he just won the 50-50. <laughs> well, uh, well, I know he's happy. Well, there you go. Well, it is time for high school football to resume here on WKXL AM and FM this afternoon. Concord High School is set to receive the football and will be traveling from left to right across your radio dial. The Winnicott Warriors spreading out at their own 35-yard line, getting set to kick the ball off from the 40, and here we go, Harvey Smith. All right. Garrett Stum with the wind to his back gets the ball down to the 5-yard, I mean, the Winnicott kick it down to the 5-yard line, and it is fielded there by Shane Stafford at the 5, and he comes all the way back out to the 34-yard line. Booming kick by Cotel, the kicker for the Warriors with the window is back. And as a Crimson Tide will go on offense first here in the second half, they lead 12-6. Yeah, that was uh, one terrific, terrific kickoff, as you say, Harvey, all the way back to just outside the five-yard line. And a nice run back in there by Stafford, too. He has it out to the 33-yard line, first and 10. T formation to start the tide off here in the second half. Pull back Crap Mayo right up the middle, and uh, Milligan. Ends up with the football out at about the 35-yard line as everybody dove into a pile at the 35, and Concord retains possession. Second for the Crimson Tide. Just underway, third period, 12-6, the Crimson Tide lead it. Pretty good crowd from the, the Capital Area coming down here this afternoon. Of course, the band on hand, both bands performing a very good show at halftime, just ended. The snap. First man through, Mayo dives ahead, and he stopped after about a yard gain. He tried to go off the block thrown by the center Forrestal and the right guard, Marshall. And uh, this big sophomore in the middle of that line, 6'4", 210-pound Adam Crest, put the hit on uh, Mayo right there. Harvey, the T working to perfection on that particular play is there were two Winnicott at Warrior defenders standing around, going around in a circle, looking for the ball carrier, and that's the way it is exactly supposed to work. Ball out to the, about the 38-yard line, brings up a third and five. Stafford and Milliken behind the McGonagall. Slot right extra. It's going to be a pass. McGonagall dance, but he's covered. He has nobody, no receivers, and he's going to keep the ball and turn the corner. What an interesting play. McGonagall had all kinds of time, but somebody forgot to go out for the Crimson Tide. Nobody went out. Finally, Blake Savoy released on the left side, but it was way too late. I mean, Ryan faded back. Danced, he danced, he waited, and no receivers out there. That's right, and they are going to spot the ball back for a fourth, and uh, and uh, really, as I mean, he really lost it. It wasn't like they were. It was no. like there was nobody out there for a pass. Well, I was watching uh, one of the receivers who was involved in quite a tussle right here at the line of scrimmage, and there were four or five hits head on, <laughs> and he was not able to release from that standpoint. In my book, I thought that was a penalty. All right, Concord High with a fourth and seven go up to the line with their full complement. And just before they dance back into punting formation, the Warriors take a timeout. So Concord's going to punt into the wind. We'll be right back. 12-6, Concord leads. Stay with us. Friends, they're always there, ready to share your ups and downs to help lighten life's loads to talk with and trust. At Horizon Bank, we're your friends, and we care about you. That's why each time you stop in, you'll get a warm smile, friendly greeting, and prompt purse hugs. That's what a friend deserves. Whatever your financial needs, see us at Horizon Bank today. While we can't take the place of your best friend, we're behind you all the way, ready to share the load. Together, we're strong. Horizon Bank and Trust, 197 Loudon Road, Concord, member FDIC. Long, long count through Mayo's leg, back to McGonagall. He gets it into the air, into the wind, and it has a trampoline effect up there in the against the wind. It is fielded by a warrior back at the 25. He drops it, picks it up, and then he is ridden down to the ground hard by several Concord High tacklers down there. Jerome Brokenbra. Well, then he dropped it, then he picked it up. And uh, look at where they're putting the ball, Bruce. His forward motion, <laughs> they say, was seven yards up the field. This game is suddenly starting to take a walk on the wild side. As uh, <laughs> This has been a strange series of plays ever since the opening kickoff of the second half. And a uh, lot of confusion down on the field. <laughs> Equally as much up here in the press box. But the bottom line is right now, it's a first and ten for Winnicott. They're at their own 27-yard line. High formation. Broken bra, flank wide right to the, for the Warriors. 
Pickett is back to pass. He's going to get snow. He avoids two tackles, puts it in the air, kind of throws it away into no man's land, but that's okay. And I think he avoided a sack and about a 12-yard loss back there by getting away from two Cargett High defenders. As it turns out, it uh, was a pretty good play for uh, the youngster Pickett as he uh, was indeed about to get hit several times and uh, ran out of real estate and just tossed the ball down the field. There was a Winnicott receiver coming back toward the ball, and that avoided the flag, but the bottom line here is second and 10 from their own 28-yard line. All right, eye formation again for the Warriors. The snap, straight give. No, picking the sack. The pass, and he's going to get swarmed under. Target high wouldn't let him set up. And the initial hit made by Dave Velocich. Dave had plenty of help, but he'll get credit for the tackle as he comes up with his 17th tackle of the season here in 1991. And that puts the ball back at the 24-yard line. A loss of four yards on the play. Brings up a third down and 14 for the Warriors. Velocich has looked very, very tough defensively this afternoon. Jack Addy and the coaching staff gives a bad cat defensive award after every game. <laughs> Blake Savoy has won the last three. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dave Velocich pick it up this afternoon. He's been tough on defense. Third down for the Warriors and 14 yards. And a picket is back to pass. And on the option, he throws it back to Broken Bra. And Broken Bra has no room at the 20. And he's going to be thrown back even further for a loss down there. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Dave. I didn't want that. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Broken Bra right there is. He was nailed uh, big time back at the 21 uh, yard line. Loss of another three on the play. And here's a quick setup, Harvey. Kevin Cotell back to punt. He's back at about his eight-yard line. High snap, steps up to the 10, almost blocked. He's, uh -oh. a, he's interfered with. There's a flag down for roughing the kicker as Cargett High tries to uh, get the loose ball at about their 30. They almost gave it up at the 30, and the kicker, Cotell, is down. The emphasis, he was trying to get up, and the referee said, right where you are, son. <laughs> so uh, the referee said that, huh? He, he did. I saw him. He put his hand down. He, he told the kid to lie back down. That's because uh, he didn't want the kid to be moved because he, exactly. he was injured. Exactly. It was, it was Rob Sawyer who crashed into the kicker Cotel, and that's going to give the Warriors back the football in the defense of Rob Sawyer. He's 6'6", six, six, and he was lumbering in, and he had already committed himself towards the punter, and uh, he, he had left the ground. His feet were uh, had left from under him, and he just crashed into Cotel. He couldn't stop. It was inadvertent, but nonetheless... He did put him down with a pretty good hit, and it's a justifiable flag that was thrown. Yeah, that's true. Uh, roughing so, the kicker call. And uh, Cotel, I think, is on the sidelines now, being administered to by yeah, the medical staff down there. And he probably doesn't mind the attention he's getting from the medical staff. Yeah, two rather attractive young ladies <laughs> down there. You noticed that. Of course. <laughs> All right, first down for the Warriors. I'm married. I'm not dead. Out of the eye comes the eye back, Matt Carlin, and he goes straight ahead. Pretty good talent here for Winnicott in the underclass, uh, underclass classes, if you'd let me. Carlin is a sophomore, and a pick at the quarterback is a junior. Kevin Law, starting flanker, is a junior. And uh, things are on the upswing over here for the Warriors. They really are. That was a pickup of five yards on the play. Second and five from their own 42-yard line. High formation. Second down and five. In motion goes the uh, left flanker. Back to pass his picket. He puts it in the air. And it's picked off on the near midfield on the far side by Matty Ekstrom. As he came in front of the intended receiver and had it in his hands, but he was going so fast he couldn't quite hold on to it. Yeah, that was an excellent play by the Concord defense there as they came up and just batted the ball away as he was flying toward the sideline and was completely off the ground and just knocked the ball out of bounds. Third and five now from their own 42-yard line. And that was Cotell back in there yep. <laughs> who almost had that pass. He ran pretty fast, too. All right, third down for Winnicott here. 12-6, Concord leads. We're in the third period. Brickenbrar is in motion right now. First man through is a fake. And then it is a lateral to a back. Kevin Law who's just hanging around back there, and I'm sure Bruce is going to say, Kevin's going to say thanks a lot again. Exactly. Because it wasn't intended to go to him, 
But Pickett was in a lot of trouble and shoveled it off and said, here, get me out of trouble. Hey, Dave, don't do me any favors, okay, pal? <laughs> Back to the 36-yard line, and that is a loss of six plays on uh, six yards on the play. Brings up a fourth down and just a smidgen over 10, fourth and 11. Kyle. All right, Cotel back at his 22-yard line. Low snap this time. It's a fake. He's coming right up the middle of the field. The 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. Crockett High's 45, 40. And a fake punt by Kevin Cotel and right up the middle of the field and then bearing to the right. A huge first down run and deep into Crockett High territory. I'll tell you what. What a terrific call. Uh, by uh, Coach Gagne there on the Winnicott sideline because they knew that Crockett was going to be a little bit gun-shy after that penalty on the last play when uh, they uh, kept the uh, the Winnicott drive alive. And so nobody got near the punter, and he just took off up the field for a nice gain all the way down to the Crockett 41-yard line, Harvey. Oh, <laughs> Dick Gagne Great pulled play. one out of his hat right there. Great offensive coordinator for high school kids. He makes it fun. I back gets the call. Collin comes up the middle to 35. Down close to the 30, and it won't be a first down, but it's a nice little piece of running by Matt Carlin, the sophomore Iback. 23-yard pickup on that last play. This one goes for about eight yards down to the uh, 23. Dick Gagne, one of the greatest touch football players in South End history back there in Crockett. <laughs> he used to use the two apple trees in his front yard for protection, and no one could ever get through those trees to get him. All right. Ouch. Pickett on the option, pitches it back to Broken Bra, and Broken Bra is going to be thrown for a loss back at his 30 line. I think they're using that up the punt, Harvey, um, <laughs> because that run is 0 for 3 with big losses, uh, losses on all of them. That one going for six yards back the other way brings up a third down and eight. Kevin Law heads into that backfield right now, and Jason Deo heads off. So it is Carlin, Law, Daly in the backfield with Dave Pickett, the quarterback. And now Carlin, the one lone back, as Pickett sends everybody up to the line of scrimmage to go out for a pass. They fake it one way. They give it to uh, Carlin, and Carlin is across the line of scrimmage with a lot of room, but he's tripped up just as he crossed the line of scrimmage. That could have been another big gainer. Yeah, it sure could have been, as he uh, was off to the races over the right side, but uh, somebody just got a hand up off the line and uh, was able to knock him down for a short gain out to about the 38-yard line of one it brings up a fourth down and uh you know, actually it looks more like six so uh we'll call it a fourth and six they're going to go for it here and they're not going to go back in punt formation colin is at the back of the eye back to pass his picket he sets up at the 45 back to the 47 puts it in the air it's complete down to about the 33 yard line inside the 30 to the 27 yard line a nice catch in traffic down there o'brien the end on the right side, 5'8", senior, 145 pounds, has been kind of quiet this afternoon, but he is an outstanding receiver. Caught four passes against Conkert a year ago. Comes up with a big one right there. Pickup of 11 yards on the play, and Pickett now is 3 for 8 for 22 yards here this afternoon. Pickett was perfect on that toss right there. <laughs> All right, eye formation from Conkert High's 28-yard line. Man into the right side. Iback gets the call, Colin, right up the right side, across the 30 to the 25, down to the 24-yard line, and the Warriors are trying to march in and tie this game up with 4-10 to play. In period number three, Concord is leading at 12 to 6. Cut it down inside the 25 to the 24-yard line, pick up a three, second down and seven yards to go for a first down for the Winnicott Warriors, who are moving the ball rather easily here against the Crimson Tide, helped out by the roughing the kicker call. That is right. Let's not forget that kicker call. Eye formation. Daly short. Carlin deep in the eye. Carlin gets the call after two fakes. Stutters at the 25. Has running room, but is tripped up again. And it allows Tom Marshall to come up with his 33rd tackle of the season as he is Concord High's leader in open field tackles. And Marshall put a good hit on Carlin right there. That was a great hit on him. It brings up a third down. Keeps it third and seven. But this time they're closer to the 25-yard line. Let's Andy see. football game, sorry Harvey, nope. 316 left here in the third quarter of play, 12 to 6, Concord on top. The ball is just inside the 25-yard line of Concord High. A man in motion again, it is Cotel. Pickett is back to two fakes, put it in the air, Cotel has it inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. Make that Helio Caesar on the reception down there. 
not Kotel. It was the end on the other side. Nice catch. And that is the Warriors' ninth first down of the ball game. And a Concord High player down on the turf here. A first down for the Warriors, and they could get another one before punching it into the end zone. And it's not going to be easy over here in the second half this afternoon. You heard Chuck Young at halftime, Bruce. I thought he was a little bit strong in, in terms of saying Concord High was controlling uh, the line of scrimmage on both offense and defense. I thought that the Warriors showed long times of control in the first half, and they certainly are here in period number three. Well, part of his uh, comment on the control might stem from the fact that Winnicott ran uh, 24 plays, half Concord ran 34 plays. So that's a little bit of offensive control anyway. It certainly is, but when you think of Concord High's long, sustained drive, and uh, they held on to the ball on their first drive for 7 minutes and 18 seconds, and on their second drive, they held it for 4 minutes and 23 seconds, uh, one a 65-yard drive and the other a 64-yard drive, Concord perhaps would have more plays in the offensive bank. That doesn't mean uh, when it kind of didn't have drives of its own. Exactly. So they, we cannot see the number of the Concord High player down on the ground as the medical staff <coughs> excuse me, is attending to him. So. And my binoculars are sitting <laughs> in the bookcase back at home. Oh, they are. 12-6 <laughs> is the score, and when it kind of is very seriously threatening here to tie this up with 257, as they have the ball inside Carkins 15. We'll be back with more from the coast right after this. Stay with us. You passed on. At Horizon Bank, we're your friends and neighbors, and serving you is our number one priority. That's why we'll never leave you hanging when it comes to your financial needs. Each time you call or visit Horizon Bank, you'll get a friendly greeting and prompt courteous service because we believe friends should never be kept out in the cold waiting too long. Whether you want to discuss checking services, savings plans, taking out a loan, or whatever, come on in. Our lines of community always open, always warm. Together, we're strong. Horizon Bank and Trust, 197 Loudon Road, Concord, member FDIC. Kick off the fall television season with exciting values on Zenith from Coles TV Video, 109 South State Street, Concord. 19-inch Zenith color TVs for only $199. 13-inch color sets for a low $179. Full-featured Zenith consoles such as a huge 27-inch with remote control for only $649. Plus Zenith VCRs with multi-brand remote, $249. And Zenith 8mm camcorders for $699. See it all and more at Coles TV Video, 109 South State Street, Concord. Well, the Concord player is still down on the field, and they are still attending to him, and we have not been able to pick up his number yet, but this appears to be, uh, uh, unfortunately, something of a serious nature, Harvey. It is, and uh, again, we can't... Uh, tonight, uh, we will continue our uh, weekend coverage of sports with the first game of the World Series. It's that time of year, Atlanta at the Metrodome tonight, the uh, Minneapolis Twins and uh, the Atlanta Braves with two mammoth games, six and seven, in Pittsburgh to turn the series around in their favor. And a uh, neat little story that uh, I read this morning, Bruce, uh, in game six, a lot of Atlanta fans were back down there in Georgia watching the game, and they saw several empty seats. And as a matter of fact, there were over 11,000 empty seats for yes. so game six and seven. And so... Several fans got together, and I don't know who was responsible for organizing it, but they chartered several planes to get out there for Somebody with money. Yeah, <laughs> and you heard the chanting, the war chant that went on, and the players said that was just a tremendous lift when they went out for batting practice for Game 7 up there in the upper section of the stands where nobody ever sits, the Bob Uecker seats, they call it. <laughs> there were these several hundred Braves fans that had flown in to uh, Pittsburgh, for the game, and they started the chant as soon as the players came out an hour early for batting practice, and so touched were the uh, Atlanta Braves that they actually went over and uh, looked up and waved to all of them and thanked them for coming, and uh, it had an effect on uh, the performance that night, and all you could hear was this eerie chant all night long. That's right. Uh, well, the Concord player is up, but not under his own power. He's being carried off the field now by a couple of teammates, and still can't pick up the, uh, the number, Harvey. No, I can't either. And the way they're carrying it, I'm not sure the binoculars sitting at home in the bookcase would help at this point. So the Atlanta Braves on the radio tonight, 1450 radio AM and 102.3 FM. And here come the Warriors of Winnicunit to the uh, Cargett High School 12-yard line. First and a 10 trying to tie it up. A man in motion to the right side. A fake and the eye back gets it. 
as Carlin comes up the middle and he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Cargett had that one sniffed out real well. And uh, getting back to the baseball for just a moment, you know, everybody says, oh, what a great story the Atlanta Braves is, and this and that and the other thing, and it is. It takes nothing whatsoever. But that's a pretty good story on the Minnesota side of things, too. They went from worst to first as well. That is correct. The Braves are quite a story, but so are the Twins. All right, I formation, second and 11 after the one-yard last. Back to passes, pick it. He puts it in the air, and it is underthrown. It bounces off the turf to Cotel. And as he tries to field it, he wished he hadn't, as he took a pretty good hit from McGonagall and another pretty good hit from Tom Marshall. And a third and 11, the 13-yard line, and I saw the... Uh, Field goal people practicing yeah. on the sideline during that extended timeout. The field goal wouldn't tie it up here, but it would certainly make things interesting. Oh, look at that. Jeremy's bringing up my hot chocolate. Of course, yeah. he doesn't know it's mine yet. He thinks it's his. <laughs> I'll huh? tell him when he gets here. And that yeah. Snickers bar in his left hand, is that yours also? Oh, wait a minute. Wait. I didn't give him that much money. Ah. He's been high that formation. Here we go. Third and 11. Pickett is back to pass. He sets up at about his 22. He's in trouble. Rushes out across the 20 to the 15. Inside the 10. Down to about the 6-yard line. As Dave Pickett dodged a lot of traffic back at around his 23-yard line. He escaped the rush initially on the right side. Escaped another rush on the left side. And then he scooted right up the field. Down close to, to the 6 or 7-yard. Nice run by Dave Pickett in trouble. Fourth down. Biggest play of the ball game coming up. For Dick Gagne's Warriors right here. It's 12-6. Concord leading. 136 to play in period number three. And a fourth and about four for the Warriors. From the Concord seven-yard line. Cotel flanked right. I formation. Man flanked left. Back to pass is Pickett. He puts it in the air. And it is knocked down in the end zone by Matty Ekstrom. A big pass rush against Pickett by the Concord High interior line, and they forced Pickett to throw it early. Well, I'll tell you, they may not have punched it in, but they did what Concord did. We have a winning cutter player down on the field. They did what Concord did a week ago against Spalding, uh, putting together a long scoring drive, just not able to come up with a touchdown. Not a scoring drive, but a, a long drive at any rate. And they maintained possession all for quite some time, from 10:13 all the way down to 1:19. So almost uh, 10 minutes that they uh, maintained uh, control of that football. That's a long time. It man. sure is. It sure is. Against the Cockatiel defense that uh, has been coming on of late. 1:19 to play, period number three, and a little bit of a delay here as they uh, tend to a win a cunnet player. The medical staff is out there in the end zone on the right side, and now Dick Gagne, the head coach, heads out there. I believe that the Cargett High player who was assisted off the field was Shane Stafford, the safety for the Crimson Tide, only because he was not in there in that defensive series for the first time this year, and he is on the ground across the way. He is sitting up on the ground, going through some stretches, and so I have to believe it was Shane who was hurt uh, and caused that long delay before. 119 to play here from uh, Winnicott High School. They are attending a Warrior down on the field. Damon Osgood, the uh, stepfather of uh, Ryan McGonigal, Concord High quarterback, won the 50-50 raffle here at halftime. Uh, that's a positive sign. Other games uh, on tap, Pinkett and that Merrimack, and uh, maybe our guy Juan back at the station can give WDER a call in Derry and see what's going on with that Pinkett and Merrimack game. Nashville at Memorial tonight. London Derry at Milford this afternoon and Keene at Central this afternoon. The Bishop Brady Green Giants are at Cardinal Spellman High School in Brockton, Massachusetts. The Giants need a win against Cardinal Spellman or against Franklin in a homecoming game next Friday night back there at Memorial Field to qualify for the MS playoffs. Bishop Brady going into that game is one and five on the year, and the Cardinals of Cardinal Spellman are three and two and play a pretty tough schedule down there in the Bay State. I talked to some folks down at Cardinal Spellman yesterday. And uh, they say they play some pretty good football teams, but they might be a little bit biased on their side of things. But we'll have to see what the score is. Uh, Bishop Brady with a fine effort a week ago against Fall Mountain. And, uh, you know, you look back to the Monadnock game that they lost by a point, and you look back to the Plymouth game where they played tough. They could, with a break here and there going the other way, be in fine position. But right now, at least one win out of their final two games of the season to make the MS playoffs. This is the... 12th meeting in the series between Concord and Winnicott down through the years. Concord leads the series 7-4, and they're being threatened here this afternoon, believe me. First game was back in 1968. Winnicott won that first game 7-6. The coach was Jim Kelly, 
And Crockett High was going through the throws of an 0-8 season. The players on that team against Winnicott, Net Paul Murphy, Dunk Matthews, Mike Milligan, and the Crockett was actually going through the throws of a 24-game losing streak. But the uh, the touchdown that Crockett scored, old Jim Kelly came up with a water bucket play as uh, the uh, Mike Milligan was called over to the sideline, supposedly to be getting a drink of water, and then he, shoot, he shot down and uh, got a long pass. And Crockett High set up their touchdown with the old water bucket play. Seems back to up. me that was called once or twice back in those days. <laughs> I All think right. I remember that once in Nashville. Cockett has the football. They've taken over on downs from their five-yard line, and they do not want to cough it up here. Mayo gets the pitch, comes around the right side, up to the 10-yard line, and it'll be second and seven. Second game in the series was a year later. Winnicott had won the game 29-6, to but again, remember, it was part of a 24-game losing streak. And I remember talking to Jim Janot and Gardner Hill about casting Cockett High football during a 24-game losing streak that was a span of three and a half years, and how it wasn't much fun to be broadcasting back then. And we were complaining about a two-game losing streak on the way over here. We've been spoiled because <laughs> since we've been broadcasting, we've had playoff games every year out of either Concord or Brady over the last 11 Not years. Not just playoff. We've been to the championship every All right, year. McGonagall's going to put it in the air. He's got it out there. It's complete to Mayo at the 25, the 30, the 35, and he's hauled down from behind. And in defense of Mayo, who was alone, he had to wait for the football to catch up to him. And that gave the Winnicott High secondary a chance to catch up to him, but it's a big pass play unloaded by McGonagall to Mayo. Harvey, can you believe that is Concord's first first down of the second half? No, I cannot believe that. And with 28 seconds to play in the half, Concord will bring its key formation to the 36-yard line. There's the second man through, Andy Milligan. Nope, McGonagall keeps. He's looking past. Now he tucks it up. He tries to turn the corner, and he's thrown down right at the line of scrimmage. He ran 15, 16 yards all sideways and get tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Pick up of 27 yards on that pass play, by the way. The reason that Concord has uh, not been able to, uh, uh, well, we'll continue that thought after we pause here for a timeout. After three quarters of play, it is 12 to 6, Concord on top of Winnicott. Come back and join us in 60 seconds. You know, high school sports are a source of great interest and pride, not only for the schools involved, but the communities they represent. High school sports help bring a community together, providing a common focus to care about and to cheer for. Now, because of this important role in the lives of our communities, high school sports are about a lot more than winning and losing. They are about working together and growing together. And that's why high school sports are such a tradition in the Capital Region. And the Capital City Law Firm of Rath, Young, Pignatelli, and Oyer, on behalf of its clients and friends, is pleased to be a part of this tradition by helping to bring these broadcasts to our community. And even more pleased to be part of a community is so much for its young people. First play from scrimmage from the fourth quarter, the Tide. McGonagall, right side, sets up the pass, puts it in the air. It's down and he overthrows Andy Milligan down at the 40 of Winnicunit. And it'll bring up a third down for the Warriors. We are just underway, period number four, Concord leading 12-6. To continue my thought about why Concord didn't have a first down until right there at the very end of the third quarter, uh, Winnicott had maintained the ball for almost nine and a half, almost ten minutes of that uh, third quarter. Eighteen plays they ran, and the drive stalled on a fourth and four at the seven-yard line. Right now, it is a uh, third down and eight for Carcutt from their own 39. Milligan in the slot right side. Double fake, and now McGonagall heads around that, rakes the pass, keeps the ball, crosses the 40 up to the 45, near the 47. It's going to be close to a first down. Isn't this going to bring up an interesting call? Either an interesting spot of the ball and or an interesting call by Jack Gaddy. You are right. I'll tell you where the referee is standing over on this side. That is going to be awfully, awfully close. I don't think they have it. But they are going to call for permission. a measurement. And the chain crew comes out onto that when I cut it high. Yeah, now that I look at it, I wish he does have it. Just by three inches, and uh, the Crimson Tide have a big fourth down call. The ball is at the 47-yard line. It's not even across midfield. Do they go for it here? I would be real surprised if they don't go for it here. Riverboat Gambler is going to strike again right here. 12 to 6 is the score. Concord High with a 6 point lead, a precarious six point lead, and there they come the Tides. 
to the 47-yard line. They need four inches for a first down. McGonagall box signals. Forrestal snaps the ball. They hand it to Ekstrom. He dives ahead, and he should have it. It looked like a goal line touchdown dive by Ekstrom. He was just trying to dive ahead and get the necessary four inches to give the Crimson Tide fresh legs, and he does that. Matty Ekstrom's had a big game here this afternoon. Well, I'll tell you, one yard, the touchdown dive, they go to Ekstrom. He's got two one-yard scores here this afternoon. So this one just for a first down, but it's out to the 49-yard line. They needed three inches. They picked up almost two yards on the play. First and ten for Concord from their own 49. I've been waiting for Ekstrom to have this kind of game. He's a talented youngster, and he's broken out here today. McGonagall double fake, pumps back to the 40, puts it in the air, long bomb, pass! Went it over his shoulder at the 25, down to the 20. A beautifully thrown ball by McGonagall and a great reception by Pat Wooded. Over his shoulder at the 25 and down inside to the 18-yard line with the spot of the ball. And looking back into a tough sun here on the coast, give Wooded credit for a great reception. 33 yards on that play. So here come the Tide, trying to put it away. 10.57 they have to play. Six lead. McGonagall's over 100 yards passing here this afternoon. All right, Ryan Box signals. He gives it to the first man through. It is Mayo, and the fullback comes across the 15 to the 14, and finally to rest at the 13-yard line. I think that long drive when they didn't get the points is uh, kind of taking Winnicott kind of out of this game as Concord is really opening up some huge holes on the line and also getting up in for those long pass plays. They've had two of them here in the third quarter, one for 27 yards and the other one for 33 yards. Right now they have a second down and five, and they are just outside the 10-yard line. T formation from the 11 for the Tide. They have to get to the eight for a first down. McGonagall fakes the Milligan, he keeps. He skirts the left corner to the 15, 14. He's down to the 10, and he's ridden out of bounds. He has to get to about the eight and a half, maybe the nine for a first down. It's going to bring up a third down and about two for the Crimson Tide. The ball is spotted right on the 10-yard line. Third down and two, as Harvey said. They are at the Winnicott at the 10-yard line, and Concord has taken this ball and uh, moved it down the, uh, the field very nicely here this afternoon. All right, McGonagall brings the Tide to the 10-yard line. They need two for a first down. Third down for the Crimson Tide. They give us to Milligan. He dances across, low down to the five. First down, if everything's clean down there, I don't see any flags, and it'll be a Crimson Tide first down from the five-yard line. Concord first and goal from the five. They lead it 12-6, to six and they're trying to put the pesky Warriors away right here. And that is their 15th first down of the ball game, Harvey. Uh, 12 of them on the ground now, three of them via the passing route. Uh, every year, Dick Gagne has these kids fired up to play Concord. Yeah. I wonder if a lot of it has to do with the fact that Dick is a Concord native. And he put something special into the preparations this week. Well, Winnicott has been fired up to play a few teams this year. They've come up short, but they're a good football team. Split back formation from the Warrior five-yard line. The pitch to Mayo. He dances. He gets caught at the seven, and then he scoots it into the five to the three. Oh, Mayo was caught back at the seven, but he used his athletic talent and guile to get away from the Warrior. That header wrapped up, and he side to the three-yard line. And oh. now make it to two. Yeah, exactly. They marked it even in further than uh, he appeared to be down. It's down about the two-yard line. Eight minutes, 40 seconds left here in the ballgame. Concord 12 to six, and threatening for more here. And this isn't quite close enough to give it to Ekstrom for a one-yard dive, so we'll see who gets the ball. Ekstrom is there. back there with Mayo <laughs> and Milliken from the two-yard line. Second down for the Tide. And Milligan gets the call, left tackle, touchdown. Can he get that much-needed third touch? And Milligan pulls off his 10th touchdown of the year here in 1991, and it came at a great time to give Concord an 18-6 lead with 8.22 to play. Nice blocking by the linemen on that side. Tom Marshall and Og Young, two hard-working seniors, just pushed ahead two big kids in front of them, Adam Cress at 210 pounds, and the Levon Knowles at 310 pounds, Ooh. and that is a correct weight, everybody, and give Marshall and Og Young credit. Cockett's going for two. They've missed every time. Ryan, double fake, sprints right, gets caught from behind and gets thrown to the ground as Ryan had the option of running and passing, and all of Cockett receivers were bunched up together in the right part of that. They weren't spread apart, and Ryan had to run, and he got caught. So Cockett High is going to go 0 for 3 in convergence here. But they do take the lead, 18 to 6, 8.22 to play. We'll be back with the tide kickoff right after this. Stay with us. 
the area's family footwear center, Denroy Shoes at 76 North Main Street in downtown Concord invites you to the locker room. It's the new locker room at Denroy Shoes, and it's chock full of great Nike footwear and Nike clothing. The locker room at Denroy Shoes has Nikes for men, for women, and for children. The locker room at Denroy Shoes has Nike gym and book bags, Nike hats, Nike t-shirts, Nike sweats, and cool, comfortable Nike nylon jackets and pants. You'll love the selection, and you'll find the values outstanding. Of course, for athletic footwear, the locker at Denroy Shoes just can't be beat for selection. Men and women can choose a Nike shoe for every athletic activity, from walking to cross trust to basketball, from cleated to running, from force to the Nike ear. So when it comes to athletic footwear, you look to Nike. And when it comes to Nike, look to the locker room at Denroy Shoes, 76 North Main Street, in the heart of downtown Concord. There's a flag down on the kickoff here. Garrett Stum got the ball down to about the 12-yard line. The returner advances out to the 18, and the officials are down there now sorting it out. As there was a flag down in the winning cut and end of the field. Touchdown drive on that uh, last score for Concord High. 93 yards, 12 points, 4 minutes and 57 seconds. And it was a two-yard run by Andy Milliken. The point after touchdown, again, no good for Concord this time on a two-point conversion attempt as uh, McGonagall was uh, tackled in the backfield as he rolled to his right with the option to pass or carry. This is going to be a call against Winnicott. It's going to put them back in the shadow of their own goalpost, almost literally, as the sun is setting over here and the on the seagull. Not quite setting, but it's getting low in the sky. Anyway, it's uh, at their own seven-yard line where Winnicott will take over first and ten with eight minutes left in the game. All right. Pick it. Fades back to the goal to the I-back Carlin, who comes right up through to about the... Uh, 10-yard line. It's going to be a decent pickup given the situation as the shadow of the goal line is right behind the Warriors, and this is a tough place for them to operate out of, but give Carlin credit for two and a half or three yards on the game. Yeah, just about out to the 10-yard line, uh, just shy of the 10, so we'll, we'll give him three, Harvey, just to be fair about it. Uh, second down and seven for the Warriors. All right, one loan back now and a pro set for the Warriors. That is Carlin. They pitch it to Kyle, and he's going to try and turn the corner, and he gets caught by Milligan down near the two-yard line. Yeah, he is pushed he way came back. across and put a nice hit on Matt Carlin. Andy Milligan is the uh, end on the left side. Two games into the season, Coach Jack Gaddy took Blake Savoy from the defensive end and put him inside at line. Andy Milliken from the inside linebacker out to the left end, and it has been a tremendous defensive move for the head coach. It really has been. Uh, that's one thing that Jack Eddy does. He uh, may not have the best talent in the state, but he certainly knows how to use what he's got. All right. Third down for the Warriors and big. Pickett in his goal line. Runs to the right. Puts it in the air. Mayo tries to intercept it. It is it by extra. Hale was just a little too short as he tried to reach up and grab the ball. He went a kind of warrior end to Kotel, got his hands on the ball and tapped it up in the air and Matty Ekstrom came along and intercepted the ball for his first interception of the year and Concord High's eighth interception of the year. Their first in two and a half games here in the state of the answer this year. They were off and running in their first four games and uh, Matt Ekstrom comes up with his first interception of the year. I'll tell you what, sets him up in fine field position to it. The winner cut at 25-yard line, first and 10 for Concord. T formation for the Tide. They'd love to get that fourth one right now. McGonagall fakes, puts it in the air, and Milligan dives and can't quite come up with the catch. And he had Andy out there, but Ryan just on the run overthrew or threw in front of Andy Milligan coming out of the backfield. Second down and 10 for the Tide from the Tide line of Winnicunnan. Ryan's passes have been just a little bit wide uh, on a couple of occasions here this afternoon. Uh, he is 3 for 6 for over 100 yards passing. We'll figure it out for you in our postgame show. I'm sure when Jack Addy looks at the offensive sheet, he's going to be so thankful for those three long drives and the Tide seemingly getting their offense back together again. Second and 10 for the Tide. Double fake. McGonagall fades back, puts it in the air. He's going for wood and wood it has it and drops it, and then the flag goes down. There was a lot of bumping on it. Which way is the call going to go? It's either offensive interference or it is defensive pass interference. Uh, since the defensive man fell down, I'll bet you they call it against the offense, and this is going to push Concord back. 
The uh, officials are not, they're conferring with each other, and it is offensive interference against Pat Wooded. Yeah, I don't think that's an altogether bad call. They were both going for the ball, but I think the Cox uh, player maybe was a little more aggressive going for the ball, shall we say? I will give the, the winner kind of defender the credit for having the position on the field. Yeah. He had great body position, and for in order for, for Wooded to get to that ball, he had to initiate the contact and go through Cotel, who was the defensive back in that situation. So it is offensive pass interference. I'll never Great. forget the biggest offensive pass interference I ever saw was yeah. Concord and Spalding at Memorial Field. But Concord had just gone in to make it a one-point game, and they went for two in the win, and they got the two points, and they called Matt Lyons for offensive interference. The films showed that they were wrong later, but it was too late. Mayo, fullback crap right up the middle. Gets five or six yards back. But it is third and a bundle here from the Coast, folks. Third and 25. Okay, uh, well, that was a, a second and 25 there. So, oh, that's right, loss of a down. So that was right. third and 25. So this will bring up a fourth down play for the Crimson Tide. And they are at the 36-yard line. That was a pickup of four yards on the play. Brings up a third down, fourth down, rest. Still can't get it <laughs> right 21. down now. Fourth <laughs> down over there, Brucey buddy. You lose the down in football when you get a penalty. Ryan McGonigal back to his... 47-yard line. Dave Wasage, the center, in the snap for four snap. Ryan takes it, steps up to the 45, booms a spiral back to about the five-yard line. Cotel takes it there, steps up to the 10, and that's as far as he's going to get. Good coverage by the Concord High Special kids right there, especially team kids, I should say. 1968, Winnicott kind of at 7, Concord 6, and 1969, Winnicott kind of at 29, Concord 6. Concord finally beat Winnicott kind of in football in 1970. They headed into the final period at 6-6, and Billy Harbrick came up with two touchdowns in that final period to lead Concord High to victory and finally get a win over Winnicott in football hmm. back in 1970. Billy uh, Harbrick, everybody knows who he is now. Yeah, really. Warriors set up now at their own 11-yard line, first and 10. And they give the ball to Carlin. He comes right up the middle, the fullback does. Picks up three or four yards, and it'll be interesting to see if Dick Gagne tries for a long drive here for pride's sake or for the let's pick it put it in the air and try to come back on this one well they're down by uh, 12 points here 18 to 6 with four and a half minutes left in the game and it would be a heck of a comeback if they were to do that here all right the warriors come out to about the 14 yard line Everybody out on the left side, to the left side, and as he tries to put the ball in the air, he is going to be tackled in the backfield and thrown for a loss as Carcott High wouldn't let him set up. Pickett is thrown for a loss. He put everybody out to receive out on the right side, and he faded out to the right side, and he couldn't get the ball because a nice defensive play by Ben Bauer of Carcott High. Loss of nine yards on the play brings up a third and 17. And again, when it cut it within the five yard line, they are down at the four. Third and 17 for the Warriors. All right, Dave Pickett, who is a fine high school passer, the junior, double fakes, puts it in the air, and Cotel can't hang on to it at about the 17. And it's going to be a punting situation for Kevin Cotel and the Winnicott Warriors. And they're going to have to, Kevin's going to have to kick it deep in his end zone. Pickett is uh, 4 for 11 now for 34 yards this afternoon. All right, Cotel is back near the back end of the goal line. Snap is back, steps up to the middle of the end zone, puts his left foot into the ball, gets it out to about the 30, takes a win and kind of roll out to the 35-yard line, and it rolls out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. And uh, given the adverse situation, all in all, not a bad punt for Cotel out of his end zone. Not a bad punt, but it sure is going to give Concord excellent field position again as they are uh, out to the, um, let's see, the 31-yard line with a first and 10. Concord with an 18-6 lead here over on the coast, trying to pick up their fourth victory of the season and head into Dover on an upbeat for their final regular season game and qualify for the playoffs. Extra second man through right side, and he goes off left tackle for about three yards. That should be some ball game down on the coast. The Dover High staff, with all their clipboards and all their charts, get up and uh, leave the home stands here, Bruce. They have this Crimson Tide team well scouted. We've seen Boy, them yeah. most of the Concord High games this year. Absolutely. They must feel that's a big game for them. 
I uh, think it is, too. Over a loss there, undefeated season last night, 35 to nothing to Spalding. The Tide, second down and seven, deep in Winnicott territory. McGonagall trying to keep her on the right side. He's thrown for a loss in the backfield. Collin came across the line of scrimmage and had just more foot speed than Ryan did and put him down at about the 30-yard line. Boy, that was an excellent play by the youngster from Winnicott. Back out to the 30-yard line. It brings up a third down and eight for Concord High. The Crimson Tide. Going to go up four and three, and Class Ellis is shaking up to week. Second man through, Andy Milliken gets the call, and he pulls his way to the 25-yard line. It'll bring up a fourth down. And the Conkett's really not looking for the score here. They just like to run out this clock and not give the Warriors a chance. It's going to be fourth and three from the 25-yard line. Reminder coming up tonight, 8.07 airtime here on WKXL AM and FM World Series game number one from the Metrodome in Minneapolis where the Minnesota Twins entertain the Atlanta Braves. And they're keeping it on the ground. Andy Milligan gets the call. He steps ahead to the 24, 23, across the 20, down near the 18-yard line. If the spot holds up, that's going to be a first down, and it is, and Carkett's going to keep possession of this ball here with under two minutes to play. And that is their 16th first down of the game. Ball control all afternoon for the Crimson Tide this afternoon. 35 to play. They lead at 18 to 6 and it hasn't been easy over here on the coast. The Crimson kids have had to work extremely hard in this one. In the long drive that Concord High had earlier in this game they had two fourth down conversions. There's another one right there. First and 10, Ekstrom gets the call, second man through right side, bulls his way ahead across the 12, across the 15, down inside to the 14. The Maddie picks up five or six yards on the play Boy, with a generous spot of the football this time. Yeah, really, there's a long run for Matt Ekstrom here this afternoon. Of, uh, He's had a great yards. game, hasn't he? He has. Matt Ekstrom had a great oh. two-way game here. Two touchdowns, a pass interception, some critical first down calls he got in short yardage situations, as did Andy Milliken with two first downs. Now, here's an interesting situation, Harvey. Winnicott has called a timeout, trailing by 12 points with 53 seconds left in the game, and Concord has the ball second and five from the 14. That's hmm. Dick Gagne for you. He's there a competitor, I'm telling you. Dickie Gagne isn't going to quit. He, he wants his hands on the football. You never know. Long pass, score, onside kicks. You just never know. That's right. You never know. And I'll tell you what, we are going to take this opportunity to throw Juan a curve back at the station and take this 30-second timeout. Comfort and style, Chantic Apparel is the rage this fall and winter. Joe King Shoe Shop at 18 Pleasant Street, Concord offers a large selection of sweatshirts, sweatpants, shorts, and t-shirts, each in the wide variety of colors, style, and sizes you've been waiting for. So whatever your sport, look to Joe King Shoe Shop for all your athletic footwear, apparel, and accessories. Joe King is for personal professional service. Open Thursday and Friday evenings. All right, the Tide have the football at the 14-yard line, second and five from there. Give us to the second man through, and that's a fresh shirt in there for the Crimson Tide. They're getting uh, hands of the ball. Ken Parker, a 5'9 sophomore, 160 pounds, gets a call. And Parker lugs it down to uh, just outside the 10-yard line, down to the 11. Pick up a three on the play. Not a bad carry at all. Brings up a third down and two. Ed Dresser in there. You're right. Under 30 seconds left. Gary Gott is in there offensively. Let's see if Ed Dresser gets a call here this afternoon. And it is a give to Dresser, and Dresser carries down to about the 10-yard line, so they're giving the uh, new kids a chance to carry the football here. Yeah, Dresser may have and, a And uh, guess down. what? With 16 seconds, Dick Gagne takes another timeout. He wants his hands on the football. 18-6, to six, Concord. Fourth down and about a yard for a first down from, uh, for the Tide from the 10-yard line. Dick heads onto the field and says, I want one more snap of the ball, gang. Let's get it here. That's right. amazing. Yeah, but the only thing is the other team is the team that has the ball. I know, but this, <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. He is going down fighting. We haven't seen the fumble ruski out of Dick's kids today, but we did see the fake punt and a long run for a first down. What a great play that was. Take, talk about taking advantage of a situation. Yep. That's exactly what happened. The, the uh, punt attempt before, Concord had a roughing the kicker call against them. So they were a little gun-shy anyway, and what a time to call a fake punt. All right, fourth and one for the tie. They're on Winnicott's 10-yard line. Straight give, fullback crap. It's not going anywhere, and the Warriors take over with 13 seconds left to play. 
They send their offensive unit onto the field, and let's see what happens. Dick Gagne wanted the ball back. He's got it, but, well, you know, go. I'll tell you, Dick, you don't have much time, buddy. 13 seconds. But give him credit for rallying the troops. And they need two scores. And these are young kids. He's going to get a lot of them back. And in this situation, he wanted them to get used to it. Six seconds, five seconds. Are they going to be able to get it off? No flags down. They're going for the downs, and Pickett throws it. And is it out of bounds? It's not out of bounds. They complete the pass. But it's in bounds, and that should be the ball game. The Crimson Tide win their fourth of the year, and they keep their playoff hopes alive over here on the coast with an impressive 18-6 hard-earned victory. And the Concord High Crimson Tide will now take its T formation back down here to the coast next Friday night to take on Dover's Green Wave, a team that is 6-1 and, and awaiting for the Crimson Tide. And Concord is very much hit hunt here as the two teams congratulate each other out here at midfield and the coaching staff get together in midfield and a good show of sportsmanship by the kids on both teams and a nice ending to a ball game a very very fine ball game 18 to 6 Carcat high with three long controlled drives controlling that line of scrimmage they put together a seven minute and 18 drive 18 second drive in the first period together a four and a half minute drive in the second period put together a five-minute drive in the fourth period, all leading to their three touchdowns here this afternoon, and they win it 18-6. to six. It was 12-6 to six at halftime. So give Dick Gagne's Warriors credits here as they came up with a mammoth effort against the Crimson Tide. But Conkett wins it. It's fourth of the year, and now at 4-3, and three, the Tide will head down to Dover next Friday night. We'll come back here with our post-game show and take a look at the standings and the playoff ramifications right after this. Stay with us here on the coast. Concord wins it 18-6. to We'll be right back. Bobby Young and the staff of Young East Florist at 30 Manchester Street in Concord would like to take this opportunity to wish everyone associated with the Concord High and Bishop Brady football teams the very best of luck during their respective 1991 football seasons. You know, high school sports play a very important role in any successful community. Dedicated hard work put in by the staff and members the Crimson Tide and Green Giant players learned to work together as a team, each member completing their assignment in order to accomplish a common team goal. Now the teamwork learned by this year's group of young men on the rosters of Bishop Brady and Concord High will become a lifelong lesson on how to accomplish a common goal through athletics, knowing that how you play the game will become examples of how you go through life long after one has covered the 100 yards on the football field. This message from your florist in Concord, Young East Florist, 30 Manchester Street. And again, good luck to both Concord High and Bishop Brady. Well, it didn't take a whole lot of luck for Concord High here this afternoon, as they did more or less control the football game, but they come away with a hard fought 18-6. to Wasn't luck, but nobody said it was going to be easy either. Winnicott kind of took the kickoff and marched down the field, 70 yards at eight plays, 2 minutes and 42 seconds. And it was uh, Dave Pickett to uh, Kevin Cotell, five-yard pass play to put Winnicott it into the end zone and gave them a six-to-nothing lead. Point after touchdown kick was no good. In fact, none of the point after touchdown attempts by either school here this afternoon was good. Uh, Concord High would take the ensuing kickoff and put together a masterful 65-yard, 17-play drive, seven minutes and 18 seconds, topped off by a one-yard Matt Ekstrom dive into the end zone. And again, the point after touchdown, no good, 6-6, six to six, and that's where your first quarter ended. Concord High would recover a Winnicottet fumble, or give the ball up on a Winnicottet fumble, and uh, take the ball over, and uh, score in the uh, second quarter of play, 64 yards, 12 plays, and 4 minutes and 23 seconds it ran. Another one-yard touchdown dive by Matt Ekstrom, and it was 12-6 to six, Concord, and that's where we finished up at halftime. The story of the third quarter was a drive that came up empty for the Winnicott Warriors. 18 plays, they kept the ball for almost 10 minutes, and the drive was kept alive by a roughing the kicker call back at the 21-yard line. That put the ball all the way on 37, and they just continued on from there, picking up a total of four first downs along the way. And 18 plays, almost 10 minutes, but they came up empty as they went dry on the Concord 7-yard line on a fourth and four. Concord would take over the football and head back the other way. And uh, 93 yards, 12 plays, and 4 minutes and 57 seconds later in the uh, third quarter, Concord would uh, put it in. Actually, early in the fourth quarter, they took the ball over with a minute 19 left 
in the third quarter of play, and Concord would have another uh, touchdown, two-yard run by Andy Milliken. Again, the point after touchdown failed, and 18-6 to six is the score that will go into the record books. Concord dominated on the stat sheet as well. They had 16 first downs, 13 of them on the ground, three of them via the passing route. Ryan McGonigal, a pretty good afternoon. Six for 104 yards through the year this afternoon, Harvey. And for Winnicunit with uh, Dave um, uh, Pickett, he had uh, 10 first downs, seven of them on the ground, two through the air, one of them via the penalty route on that roughing the kicker call. 11 uh, pass attempts, four for 11 was... Uh, what Pickett uh, was able to go for 34 yards. And so as you can see, Concord not only dominated on the field, but on the scoreboard, the statistics as well. A big win for the Crimson this afternoon as they move their season now to 4-3 and three and put themselves right back into playoff contention with the number of uh, wins and losses that were suffered and endured by teams around the state last night. A rather interesting weekend, and there'll be a whole lot of computers whirring here in the capital area and other places around the state. It's playoff potentials and possibilities and scenarios and every other blessed thing are pulled together all in anticipation of next week's football action. We have another spot to take back at the station. We will do that and come back with our final thoughts after this timeout. Whether your sport is running, aerobics, basketball, rollerblades, or football, Joe King Shoe Shop has a large selection of styles and sizes to fit your every need. Top manufacturers like Reebok, Adidas, Saucony, and New Balance ensure the quality you deserve. 18 Pleasant Street and the Joe King's Outlet on North Main Street in Concord offers an extensive line of athletic apparel, too. Shorts, sweats, tees, running tights, and jackets. Joe King's and Joe King's Outlet, your sports connection. At Horizon Bank, we're proud to serve you, our neighbors and friends, because working together, we've made this community strong. Please visit us often and let us know how we're doing at Horizon Bank. We care about making our services as complete and convenient as possible. Through continued teamwork, we'll ensure your success and the success of the entire community. Now that's financial muscle. Together, we're strong. Horizon Bank and Trust, 197 Loudon Road, Concord, member FDIC. Okay, back here for the final time at Winnicott High School in Hampton on what has turned out. You know, Harvey, they're still not in the sky. It turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous day for football. A little on the chilly side, but after all, it is the 19th of October. And uh, compared to what the weather forecast was saying this morning, it sure has turned out to be an absolutely wonderful day, not only... Uh, for the fans in the sand, but for the teams on the field, too. Winnicott has got nothing to be ashamed of here this afternoon. They no. put up a good fight. That guy, they did it again. He yep. had his troops ready to play a, uh, you know, and uh, he's a little bit overmatched when you look at the, the size of Concord High against oh, no the question. size of uh, Winnicott, but uh, they've done a nice job here under adverse conditions, and he, he seems to have the school focused on football, and uh, that was not an easy thing to do to turn these kids around over here at Hampton. And... If they realign the divisions, and I, I've heard talk that they may, and they put uh, when it kind of in a more competitive conference for for their size and everything, uh, they really could do some nice things with football over here, Bruce, because uh, they're, they're fun to watch. I mean, they, they are. They, they move the ball. They had a lot of trick plays here, and it was fun. But Concord High moves up now to four and three, and get this now, folks. Pinkett and the Merrimack are playing today. We haven't heard how uh, that battle of the undefeated has come out, but both are going to be in the playoffs. Dover's going to be in, Spalding's going to be in, and Nashua are going to be in. I mean, Nashua, Spalding, Dover, Merrimack, they and five places pretty well wrapped up. And that means the final three spots are up for grabs between Memorial, Trinity, Salem, Concord, Portsmouth, West, and Exeter. Seven teams are still mathematically alive for the final three spots. Well, we can eliminate Exeter, and we eliminate uh, West on the strength of schedule, even if they do win their remaining games. Uh, it's still going to bring bring it down to Memorial, Trinity, Salem, Concord, and Portsmouth, five teams for five slots. How big is the game for Concord? Huge. Jack Gaddy says four and four won't do it. I see four and four as possibly getting it, getting a team in, but perhaps not Concord High at four and four. Yeah. Some team would have more points. And they need five and three. If they can beat Dover, they not only qualify, but they will finish either 6th or 7th. He, he seems to feel that they will finish 7th. Uh, I see a shot at them. Salem is going to be in there perhaps at 5-3 and three also, and if Concord beats Dover, they're going to pick up a whole bundle of points. 
that's going to put them ahead of most five and three teams. That's true. Salem, the mystery team that nobody mentions when they talk about the playoffs, and yet they're in. Uh, they are in, and uh, they have a game today. Uh, they beat Bishop Girton last night, and uh, they have uh, to put them up at four and three. And then they have Londonderry, and that's a neighborhood rivalry. And maybe Tom Sawyer, the troops, would do us a favor back <laughs> in the capital city and upset Salem, and that would uh, put Salem down at four and four. Or, I'll and tell you a favor that could be done for Concord would be right here on this field next Saturday afternoon when the Portsmouth High Clippers come here to play Winnicott. Yeah, that would do it also, but you can't plan on, no. on, on, on Winnicott beating a Portsmouth, and you can't plan on a Londonderry beating a Salem, and you can't plan on Central beating a Memorial next week, even right. though that would help Concord High's playoff chances. What you have to plan on is what you have in your own hands, what fate you have, exactly. and that is... Concord and Dover, and Concord can do it on its own if they can beat Dover, and it's not beyond the realm of possibility. Dover Heights had a fantastic season. They were undefeated up until last night where they got biffed pretty good by Spalding, 35 to nothing. And the big thing for the Seacoast fans is what kind of an effort will Dover come out with next Friday? They lost six kids last night because of fighting the week before against Portsmouth. They will be reinstated for the Concord High game. It'll be an emotionally charged atmosphere, obviously, and our broadcast uh, next week right now is a little bit up in the air. We're going to have to regroup and uh, get our uh, athletic team together on Monday and see whether we are going to bring you the Brady Franklin traditional game from Memorial Field or if, in fact, we will take our WKXL microphone down to Dover next Friday night. A lot depends on uh, whether we can get a line in uh, in a week with the phone companies the way it is these days, but there are a lot of intangibles that go around a decision like that. So right now... Uh, we're a little bit up in the air as to which broadcast we're going to bring you. Both would be good games, but uh, certainly we will be passing that information along to you late Monday afternoon or early Tuesday morning. Now, if one of those teams would trade and make a game Saturday afternoon, uh, instead we'd be in like Flint, but I don't want to put any pressure on either school. I wish the Brady-Newport <laughs> game had been Friday night this week, and uh, that was a good game, and yeah. we just didn't even get a chance to do it because we were on the road with a, with a Cargett High game. So it's going to be uh, interesting no matter what, but Bear this in mind, Crimson Tide with an 18-6 win here, get destiny in their own hands. They can do themselves a favor, and if they can beat Dover, they also set themselves up in a good bracket in the tournament. They stay away from Pinkerton. Yeah. If they go 5-3, and three, they stay away from Pinkerton until the finals. If they go 4-4, four and four, if they get in, they'd have to go to Pinkerton right off. That's chances not, are. <laughs> chances are. They, de they take that at this stage. Well, yep. that's going to do it for our high school broadcast this week. Remember, three long drives for the Crimson Tide here. They get back to good old Crimson Tide key formation football. They put together a 7-minute, 18 drive, 65 yards for a touchdown in the first period, a 12-play, 4-minute and 23-yard drive for a second touchdown in the second period, and a 92-yard 12-play drive that consumed 5 minutes in the fourth period. So the offense is back controlling it the way they want to. Jack Addy wins his 92nd game of his career and against 48 losses. Rutledge Junior High School's football team under Bud Blake remained undefeated, and they won their 17th in a row yesterday. We don't want to overlook that. Bud Blake has been sending some pretty good players out of his program up to the Concord High Varsity program, and he's got some troops down on the farm once again this year. Next week, our broadcast will either be Brady and Franklin from Memorial Field there in Concord or down here on the coast, Concord at Dover. Stay listening to 1450 Radio for our announcement on that early next week. Our high school broadcast this week brought to you by the Allied Insurance Agency at 500 South Street on the Bowtown Line. At the Allied Insurance Agency, your protection is their profession. Buy S&W Sports, 238 South Main Street in Concord. When it comes to bikes, cross country, and alpine skiing, bring the entire family to the leader, S&W Sports. Buy the Horizon Bank at 197 Loudon Road in Concord, your locally owned and managed community bank, a member FDIC. By Denroy Shoes, 76 North Main Street in Concord, featuring athletic footwear for the entire family. By Sports of Concord, if you're outfitting a team for the fall or winter seasons, give one of Concord's nice guys a call, Jim Burney at 224-2131. He'll come to your home or to your office. And to buy the Capital City Law Firm, Rath, Young, Pignatelli, and Oyer, on behalf of their clients and of the community. Final score from the coast, the Crimson Tide 18, the winner kind at 6. We'll be on next Friday night with our high school game of the week. For my partner, Bruce LaVoy, this is how to tell you to get out and enjoy the weather, everybody, and for the weekend. Stay tuned for the Atlanta Braves and the uh, Minneapolis Quiz tonight. We'll see you next week.